Assalamu alaikum. Eid is just around the corner and Holy Land Dates have created a premium Eid gift box that you can give to your friends and family. All of the products inside the gift box are created in Palestine and 50% of the net proceeds go towards Palestine. And the reason we love Holy Land Dates so much is that what they do is that not only do they send the proceeds towards Palestine, but these uh, by creating these products, by buying these products, uh, you're essentially enabling uh, Palestinian workers uh, to carry on running uh, their small businesses which is what Holy Land Dates use uh, to basically keep themselves running so it's a really really great cause and it's a great Eid gift that you can give to your friends and family uh, it contains a bunch of products from Palestine really good quality as well really great quality olive oil uh, and loads of other bits that you guys will love and you can check that out at holylanddates.co.uk and they're doing a offer where you can get buy two and get one free and that's on the big premium Eid gift box, which is fifty pounds a buy two, get one free. Get as many Eid gift boxes as you want and can for your family and friends. And remember to use the code FGP10 for ten percent off. That's FGP10 at HolyLandDates.co.uk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters, guys and girls, families and everybody. Uh, it's we're here, freshly grounded with big man Sam, six foot six. Assalamu alaikum. And oh, my son. And your boy, Big Faze. Yes. Yeah. That. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Um, this episode is a special one. Very special. It's very special. Mm. It's deep. Just, I saw tears in your eyes at one point. Yeah, I, I, I proper tears, bro. Yeah, saw, Did you see them? I saw the glistening. I could see my reflection. It's fun, man. Uh, guys, this is a very special episode because it's uh, the last ever episode that Sam and I are ever shooting, not only in the studio, but in the, this country. Yeah. I'm leaving. Uh, we're going to go more into that into the podcast. Mm. Uh, we wasn't going to announce it. Sam convinced me to announce it, didn't you? I did, yeah. So you felt that we needed to have an episode that was... I had to be real, I had to be honest. I think last time, I, I obviously I've known about this for a while. Last time I had to like dance around the subject or cracked a few little subtle jokes that you, whatever. But um, I thought it was essential. Otherwise, I think the, I think we would have held back so much. I'm glad we spoke because I mean, it was very, very open and honest and we both said a lot of personal stuff. And uh, I think the, uh, the, the the fans will really, really appreciate hearing it all from the horse's mouth. Is that what you call me? It's just an expression. Well, I've, never just, I've never heard you call me a horse before. <laughs> just came to my head, sorry. Uh, so... Uh, so guys, this is a uh, fresh guided episode. What episode is this number? Um, okay, yeah. So we're basically we this is a very special episode. We talk about uh, everything from uh, where I'm going, why I'm going, uh, what that means for the future. Fresh grounded, uh, why fresh grounded is uh, going to be off air for a while, um, what the future looks like for Sam, what the future looks like for me, and uh, we get really real. To be honest, um, we have some really deep conversations. We talk about everything that you guys have probably ever wanted to ask us. And we just lay it all out on the table. Mm -hmm. um, was there ever beef between Sam and I? We talk about it. And uh, we let you guys know about it. And I think we're good now, aren't we? We've always been good, <laughs> Yeah, we? yeah. I just wanted to build something up. But thanks for ruining that. It's definitely no beef. Uh, there's never been beef On my yet. side, anyway. <laughs> Maybe you're not telling me something. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, guys, uh, this is episode 277 wow. of Fresh Organic from uh, Big My Sam and a Horse, apparently. So expression. Thanks for that. My Appreciate pleasure. It. Enjoy. And welcome to a freshly grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to freshly grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said welcome to freshly grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, very good. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, bro. Alhamdulillah. Life is, things are good. Yes, alhamdulillah. Good. good. Alhamdulillah. Very, yeah, you seem good. very happy. Um, I'm wearing my new Crocs today. That's maybe yeah, why. Yeah, I saw them. Very comfortable. Yeah, they are very comfortable. They look very cool. Oh, I'm fully invested because this is my second pair now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never gone near the Crocs myself. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't suit them because you are um, more, you know... Uh, designer. <laughs> no, I should. I mean, let's be honest. Cool space, space, being real. This episode, being real. Let's be honest. I've always looked up to that. Actually, that you have a very, um, always looked up to that. Actually, that you have a very, uh, you have a suave about you, about your swagger, and it's also not in your. It is in your face, but it's not in your face. I mean, it's in your face. 
in, in my face, my face like, right now, but it's not right. in your face at all. Like, do you know what? Do you know why it's not? You know why it's in your face, but not in your face. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it, bro. You're gonna feel embarrassed, okay. right? The job you're wearing right now has got deal written all over it, right? But it's blacked oh, out. No, 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 they no, can't no, see it. Yeah, they can't see it. But that's the that's why it's not in your face because it's absolute. I'll tell you what would be in your mm. face. You know when people wear Balenciaga, but it's a bright green neon green jumper, mm. and then they're wearing like um, Prada shoes, but they're bright pink mm. Prada shoes, mm. and it's like raw. Oh, it's in my face. But when it's like black on black and it's like you can't even tell I yes. think there's a little bit of a swag about that and I think that's what I rate about you Lohan Berg, I bless you I and mean try and be a little bit subtle but well um, it's too late now yeah. it's out it's out in the open but yeah the croc um, the I, I, yeah. I invested initially in so, a pair of white um, camo white camo crocs white camo cool yeah and then I now turned it down, toned it down, yeah. because I thought I just they're so comfortable. But sometimes white camo just looks a bit out there. Too loud. <laughs> it's very loud. What's your, have you got little uh, stickers on yours? I have that. Yeah, what I can't take away the loudness of that. So this, uh, I've, it's your not initials. stickers. It's like, they're like Crocs. It's an F for either fresh or ground or phase, or depending yeah, on yeah. the time of day. Put it on uh, the. Put it on here. <laughs> Actually, we can take it off. Oh, okay, we can do that, can we? Cool. So uh, well, and then, yeah, As a because croc. I'm about. I'm all about love. Yeah. And F. then on this one, I've got a. Wow. Yeah, microphone. Did you love singing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're great. Yeah. They're fantastic. Podcast, they look very so. comfortable. I really rated the, how comfortable you looked when you came in. Thanks, bro. Do you use this bit? Uh, so they have this thing in like the croc culture called um, sports mode. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, sports mode. And so I used to wear them like that. And then yeah. everyone rinsed me because they're like, why are you wearing in sports mode? Oh, so you're not supposed to wear it in sports mode? Apparently not. Apparently, okay. it's just for when it's the time when things get serious. Fair dues. Well, they look great. My kids have got them. But yeah, I just, I don't know if I can... Wear them. They look comfy. They look great. Yeah, my kids got them as well, actually. I'm feeling it. My oldest. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're also good for, like, a lot of walking. And I've been doing a lot of walking, so... What, so you go on a big walk wearing Crocs? Oh, yeah, you can do... So, I... When I was walking? staying for three weeks in Dubai, I was... Yes. Um, okay. I was... There was a mosque 10 minutes away. Mm -hmm. So, I was doing a 10-minute walk yeah. daily. A 10-minute walk is fine. I think walking is in, like, you're going out for a walk, which is... Oh, like a hike. A walk is... I mean, yeah. What's a walk? What's the difference between a walk? A hike, I would say, involves mountains and hills. What's a and long walk? A, a walk? What's a walk? Just a walk. If you're going out for a walk, I'm like, oh, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go down to the river. I'm like, oh, that's half an hour away. You need to ah, put some okay. more stable shoes on. Fine, fine, fine. I, I would say if I'm going, setting out for a walk, it's not 10 minutes. I'll say I'm going for a walk. Oh, I'll okay. see you in about an hour and a half. I've minute. never gone for a walk. If that's your definition of a walk. Do you not walk? Never. What? Half an hour, no, no chance. Bro, I walk all the time. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you're good at that. You were on a walk this morning when, when, when you came to the podcast, weren't you? Yeah, I went for a little stroll. Yeah. How long was that? So you, I was only around the corner from my house, but I had to, I, you know, I'd, we were starting the day a bit later. I had to go and find uh, a little spot just to get myself started. So just walked around the corner to a nice area and, and waited. And uh, it was only ten minute, five minutes around the corner from my house. So wow. that wasn't a proper walk. But I went, I go for a big walk, especially during Ramadan. Yeah, it's nice yeah, to go yeah. for walks, put your headphones in. A big walk, longer the better, man. Even now, you got to the studio before me, and um, I had to wait a long time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and you were uh, rather than being in the studio waiting, you decided to be out in the sun. Fresh air and it's sunny. Why would you be inside when it's this fresh air and the sun outside? Um, because there's technology inside. <laughs> I'm for the fresh air and the yeah. sun. But it's a beautiful day today, so I'm just trying to enjoy it while it's here. It is nice. Hundred percent. You got to enjoy it when there's some sunshine. You should try and be in there. Yeah. You know. I uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, you can you can uh, I what? don't think I can change, bro. I'm an indoors guy. Uh, indoors is good, but fresh air you can't really beat it. It's got nice weather today because it's not like too hot. It's like quite fresh in the air. It's just a great day. Do you know what? Hopefully, I've got time for a walk later. Really? Yeah, I really mean that. I love walking, man. Yeah, man, you do. And uh, I've never done a walk. Be good for your mind, man. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I've got to go somewhere and um, it's easier to walk. I'm like, oh, I have to walk. Oh, no, but I'm not talking about walking, like having to walk to your next de destination. Okay. I'm talking about setting up from your house with the intention of I'm going for a walk to clear my head. I've never done that my whole life. Really? My what? whole life. That's a, normal, that's a standard procedure. I do that at least once a week. Hopefully well, more than once. It's very good for you. I'd go crazy if I didn't have that. Really? Bro, I'd go crazy. Yeah, I can tell. That's actually your true personality because ever since I've known you, you've enjoyed that. Yeah. I have to be by myself as well. Me time. With the phone is good. It's nice to be able to do things on the phone, but just out in the open. Yeah, essential for my mental health, to be honest, bro. Wow. I suppose you haven't. Maybe that explains a few things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's essential man. for my mental health. Huh? I've never thought what's essential for my mental health. Bro, like, it's a commonly. Uh, Go to practice. a really nice high tech coffee shop that has USB plugs. Oh, so much tech. Drinking coffee. So <laughs> Drinking coffee. Too techy. <laughs> And hearing the, natter, hearing, the hearing the natter, hearing the hearing the of other people buzzing off caffeine with your, your headphones yeah. and Bluetooth in your head, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a tech guy. I'm not. 
Yeah, we're different generations, aren't we, really? Yeah, we are yeah. different generations, yeah. <laughs> we established that. Yeah. I've always been inspired by your tech tech uh, side. I'm not yeah. as much as Hanan. I don't feel like I've really seen your how how techy you are, okay, but I know you are in okay. the sense that yeah, but you're very techy. I'm just I'm not that guy. Yeah, but I'm, I like it. But Thanks. Hanan's very techy as well. Hanan is very techy. Yeah, Hanan's in Umar right now. He is, mashallah. So yeah. is there. Yeah, he's, uh, he might bump into him. Yeah, he is. Uh, has he bumped into him? No, he hasn't bumped okay. into him. I said they should link up. But I don't know if they have. Or does going to Medina now? And he's with Maddi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that on Maddi's socials. Yeah, yeah. Maddi's married now. Mashallah. Can so he's there. I don't know if you know oh, it's no, there. Yeah. They're all, this is all like freshly grounded uh, born relationships. Wow, Their amazing. relationship is freshly grounded and Uzair is with us freshly grounded. Uzair owns obviously Men's Bar and Epsom. Hanan owns Men's Bar and Watford. Watford. Yeah. It's all freshly grounded based. So. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird, platform, this little thing you, you built, we built. No, we built this. Yeah, we did. The, the thing that built freshly grounded, bro, I will say this until my last words, bro. Like the thing that built freshly grounded was the first 100 episodes. The, those episodes when, and I think it, it it hit its peak on episode 100. And I'm so grateful that we did episode mm -hmm. 100 because episode 100 for me is always going to hold a very special place in my heart. And bro, now I see podcasts who hit 100 episodes and people people hit 100 episodes so quickly. They hit it so regularly. And for us to, within 100 episodes, build up a community that packed out a venue, yeah. it sold out yeah. within like way early. Uh, and if I was to celebrate 100 episodes, and then for that event to be so fun, um, that has to be, for me, peak FG, like when that was like the most, that was like the best experience or like... I say true FG. Yeah. The true FG. Yeah. Still obviously very true, but the yeah. true FG to what I, what I remember. Yeah. Um, and what an amazing um, event that was as well. It was really fun. Um, and we had no experience. I, I, had, I knew nothing about event management or yeah. an event. You pulled it off though. Yeah, Great venue been, though as well. Always yeah. remember that venue. That was a great show. Yeah, Which that was, venue took been everything, your... every, every, everything out of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it did. But what a great show! People loved it. <laughs> yeah, what's been it. your favorite? Uh, your favorite live uh, show? Uh, yeah, probably episode one hundred because of what yeah, it meant. It because meant, of yeah. when it happened, that our one hundredth episode. Yeah. Because the community it was like a small event. It was four hundred seats. Yeah. My family was there. Men's by crew was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, was that great. was nice. We was we was uh, that at the end of that event. I was, I think like uh, uh, I didn't know that events could be like good. Um, money makers and like something that like, could help us sustain freshly ground long term mm -hmm. and so I think at the end of that month at the end of that event we actually ended up I was like if we can just do a celebrated live event I don't want to make any money off it as long as we can break even we'll be fine mm -hmm. and I think at the end of that event we ended up pretty much breaking even I think we are about minus £1,000 at the end of that event sure. and you know what felt so pure is that we was not um bothered by that because it wasn't it was literally just a celebrated event it was never yeah, meant sure. to be it something the that was, it was no. never meant to be yeah. no no it's nice, man. Yeah. Not that these events are about the finances. No, of course. Because they are, they, every make... time they do feel like a celebratory event and you connect with the community. And every time you find something amazingly different, like but this this time, <clears throat> we met loads of like lovely Freshly Grind supporters. And this time what was nice is that these are Freshly Grind supporters, some of who have been Freshly Grind supporters for five, six years. And so like we met, I met this one girl who said, said that she was in a Birmingham event and she said, um, subhanAllah, she said, I, I I mentioned on my Instagram story some a few weeks ago. Someone asked. I did like a Q and A on the Instagram story, and, I, and and one someone said asked something about FG, and I said something like, I don't know. Recently, I've been getting thoughts like maybe it's time to uh, call it a day with Freshly Grounded. I'm not getting emotional. Was this? I'm not getting emotional. I've just had a bad throat. You sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and she said in this she 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 in this live event she said that. She said, I saw that you put the post. She goes, please never do that. She goes, Fresh Uganda has helped me. And she became Muslim, actually, oh. from, from Sikhism. And um, okay. and I said, how, I said, how did you like go? Because she was like, you know, you know, in, I think like right. Jilbab and stuff like that. I said, how, how do you, like, do your family know? And she said that she literally has to hide it from her. Like her grandma's like, you know, retro Sikh. Cool. Yeah. And I thought that that conversation hit me the most out of the, all the conversations on talk because I was like, wow, Fresh Ugandan actually has, um, sometimes you become, oh, it's like you, week in, week out, we're doing podcasts, but for some people, it has been something that they've hung on to. Yeah, alhamdulillah, there's, there's been a lot yeah. more than just that one sister who's come forward and said good, yeah. powerful, deep things about Fresh Ugandan though. Even way back years ago, there was a lot of uh, big emails and yeah. messages coming through, wasn't there? 
Yeah. Remember? There's yeah. Been some strong. You know, there's been there was one that uh, I I it, that probably blew me away, like the most, bro. It was like um, I think I'm about to sneeze. It was big, man. But anyway, I, it's gonna yeah. take me a while to find, so yeah. we'll forget about Don't it. Don't try and find it. Oh, you know where it is. An email. I know where it is. I know where it is. Yeah, I won't. I'm not gonna try and look. here it is. Um, essentially, basically, I'll round it up, saying that um. I can't thank Freshly Organic enough how much impact it's had on me. Um, and like this person was basically lost and they felt like the one thing that I think I wanted was I wanted, I this is me, Faisal speaking now, I wanted Freshly Organic to feel like a companion to people mm -hmm. who didn't feel like they had friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially related ones, because bro, let's be honest, I think that's, we'll dive into this actually about yeah, about this in a second, but like I think you're obviously very relatable. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Fine. But um I mean, it just says like um, the 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 struggle that's taken me to uh, the struggle that's taken to do fresh ground and all of your work. Um, I want you to know it's changed my life, and you'll I'll always have you with me. Um, and uh, you made me feel welcome, included, happy, and made me fall in love with my dean in a completely different way I never imagined. Um, my heart feels so full. No amount of thank yous is ever enough. So I just um, I appreciate it so much. Um, Allah has chosen you all to represent Freshly Grounded and there would, wouldn't have been anyone else who could have done it better. Uh, may Allah always fill your hearts with happiness and contentment and uh, because of the happiness you have made me feel. May he always keep you smiling because of all the smiles every one of your conversations has given me. May he continue to fill all your hearts with even more love for him, for Islam, for the deen because of how much Freshly Grounded has made me closer to the deen. May Allah uh, be pleased with you all. May he... Uh, may Freshly Gandhi be a Sadaqa Jariya for every one of you that has contributed to it and give up their time to do it. May Allah bless us with the weekly gathering of Freshly Grounded in Jannat al Firdaus. <laughs> I appreciate every single one of you. Like, what an amazing wow. message, bro. Yeah, yeah. That I'm one, that one, like, stopped me because that was that email there was like really long. Yeah, man. SubhanAllah. Yeah, powerful stuff. It's good. MashaAllah. Yeah. Well done. Now, but I, I, I think. Um, the, back to the relatability thing yeah. I think like the thing that's been special about Freshly Grounded companion from the beginning yeah but, but, but I, I think a lot the way Allah did it was constructed so perfectly because you can have the idea and I had the idea with the next Facebook but it didn't it didn't work mm. and I think a huge element of it is especially a huge element of the growth initially I think not to um not to like objectify you, like turn you, Sam, into an object, right? <laughs> but, the, bro, when you see like a six foot two white man. Six foot two? Six foot six. Sorry, sorry, six foot six. I was thinking about Nate for a second. Oh. Um, six foot six, yeah. white man, tattooed up, mm. and then talking about Salafi. And you were, you were and still are unwaveringly confident with your Islam. That's inspiring, bro. And it's also, at that time, six years ago, less frequently seen as, as it even is now because social media is so prevalent now. Mm. And so to see week in, week out, someone so proud of their faith, and then you got born Muslims watching that thinking, rah, like, that's inspiring, bro. And in itself, it's a thing that makes you want to click. It's like, what, bro, you, I remember clips that always made me click, click on Islamic videos, even for selfish reasons, because it intrigued me, mm. even when I wasn't like practicing. Like, remember that video clip? I don't know who, that interview of like this Muslim a guy who like had tattoos all over his face like from Philippines or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah. that? I don't yeah, know yeah. who, but- I think it was Roadside to Islam. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. So like, I always remember that because like, that yeah. made me click. How, so I think there was a huge element of it was that, and I think that you should really be proud of the people that you've brought onto it and to, to the Dean because of being so confident with your religion, even despite, you used to speak in early days about your struggles of like going to Umrah. Remember when you spoke about going to Umrah and like, people were disrespectful to you because your tattoos and stuff and even go to the masjid like sometimes people stare like as if you're like a weirdo mm. but probably because of your skin color height mm. tattoos everything all in one yeah. and the fact that you persevered and always been confident of your religion bro i've always respected that alhamdulillah man you've got to be true to yourself yeah. and if i wasn't confident with it i wouldn't be confident about my own like my own beliefs and like how what i really truly know and, and believe is the truth because there's absolutely zero doubt in my mind that islam isn't the truth so obviously i was going to embrace it when i when i when i found it but to hide it, to hide it and, and be shy with it, I mean, it's, I don't think you're being true to yourself. So um, I try, man. I try. It's not easy, but I try. So I appreciate you saying that, man. But if I wasn't here talking about Salafir and, and, and my beliefs and, and making it like outwardly known, like my faith, I wouldn't be too, true to myself, man. Mm. I'd be like hiding, hiding a massive part of me. Um, but you had a lot to... Uh 
potentially lose and you didn't have anything to lose because you don't sure. lose when it comes to, course, course, it comes course, to the dean but no, shaitan right. could convince you easily sure. that sam be careful because you're in an industry where you're trying to be successful and look at um, and subhanallah if you look at the project trajectory actually uh from six years ago to now you've gone from like you said one store to 16 17 18 stores along but how many is it now 28 but, 20, yeah. 28 yeah. no I said, I said that last time on, <laughs> when, when we did it. and then you came back and said 22 and i was like i watched it our episode i said 28 and you came back saying 22 um yeah bro but no don't get oh, me wrong there's still like elements of uh elements of that and and uh, yeah, this and the other but obviously but um bro like i know what i believe man that's all that all that's, that's all that really matters to me to be honest and if it can give any kind of benefit or confidence to to anyone great fantastic um but just being true to yourself man do you know what i'm saying it's being true true and honest there's, there's no doubt in my mind what i'm following is is, is nothing but huck it's the truth no 100 percent um people might not like it people will never understand it but ultimately like i'm doing it for me i'm doing it for my soul i'm doing it for my lord my creator do you know what i'm saying and even those times you used to go into the masjid and feeling a bit, at the beginning you feeling a bit out of place it's like some of the old uncles and the olders looking at me a certain way, like doing wudu with my arms tattooed and stuff. And one of the brothers once said to me, like, you're not, you're not here for them. You're here for Allah. I was just can't really get more powerful from that. Yeah. So nothing, no one, no one else really matters to be honest, other than, you know, nafsi, nafsi, my, my, my soul, I'm going to be accountable for my own life I've led. And that's it really. That's what it comes down to. So may Allah accept it from us. I mean, so this is a special episode of Fresh Grounded because um, we've just released, as this episode has been released, obviously we've released the video on the uh, YouTube channel, which is basically saying that we're going dark and taking a break. Yes. And people don't know the true con uh, text of that, but we're about to tell them. So that video would have been out and viewed by before this. No, exact same time. Same time. Yeah. Fine. So people probably would have watched it though before watching this guest, the three minute video, and this is probably like two hours. Yeah. So um, if you haven't watched it, watch it. But it doesn't give context and it wasn't going to give context for about a month or so. And uh, being open and frank, you came into the studio today, you were like, um, we need to talk about what's going on. We need to talk on. about it. And, so, and you're right. So I, I dodged it last time when we yeah. recorded that I almost wanted to, I played on it a little bit. Yeah. But a lot, a lot, a lot's happening. A lot's changed. Yeah. And um, I was kind of saving it for like an announcement when I'm there. But sure. it doesn't. I don't. I, I think it would always been sad if we never got to have this conversation. Have, yeah. There's going to be a conversation yeah. about it. Um, so I think the people yeah deserve to see that genuine open conversation between yeah. us. Like even the fact that I'm here now and I was here last week and and I haven't been here for a while and and you know some people know the story. Some people obviously know who I am. Some quite a lot of people probably don't know who I am. I remember seeing some of the comments in the last video saying who who is he and stuff, which is uh, you know no surprise. But I just feel like it's very relevant what, what what's about to happen and why I'm here now and the whole thing is just really relevant. Uh, we haven't even had the conversation even privately, have we? This nah, is literally the first time we're gonna have it. Not yeah. at all. So yeah, let me um, let me let me just briefly uh, just say a few things. Okay, um, should I say what's happening? Let me can, fine. Do you want to be the person to say it? No, you should say it. Uh, let me just let me just. I won't say too much. I um, had a conversation with you. I believe it was a text message or a, or a phone call when you broke some news to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, which really upset me. I can't lie. It really? really, really upset me. Yeah, because not upset in a bad way, but I just like it made me like stop and really think and reflect um, a few things. Um, but you announced to me that you were moving away to somewhere, to foreign lands. Um, and although I'm so happy and still am so happy, like it just made me think, oh, rah, that's my guy that probably been taken for granted a little bit in the sense that I know that you always, that you're there for me. Alhamdulillah, you've always been there for me. We've done amazing stuff with Freshly Grounded. But over the last couple of years, obviously, both been busy doing different things. And it just made me really think and reflect and it made me feel sad. I thought, rah, Faisal, Faisal will be leaving the country. And um, and it made me think, like I said, it made me feel like I'd been taking you for granted a little nah, bit. Nah, man. Um, that's not the case. No, of course. But that was my that was my feeling. So I just I kind of it, it kind of gave, it woke me up a little bit, bro. Um, and um, we we shot a beautiful episode like last week, two weeks ago, whenever yeah. it was, which I really really enjoyed. I'm here today, and I have every intention. Inshallah, we're gonna continue this on the new venture. Inshallah. Because I feel like I'm back a little bit. Yeah. To be honest, that feels nice. To because, yeah, I feel like I'm back a little bit, man. And it's taken that for me to kind of give me a little wake up call. Um, and that's you know, there's no excuses. I've just been extremely busy, and I've had to. I had to unfortunately put the, my presence here as to to the lower on the list of other things I've had going on. But now I just feel like it's more relevant, and and uh, I kind of feel like it's time to to reignite the original FG, like and and you know the unique chemistry that we have that so many people talk about. It was just beautiful reading the comments and the and the, the feedback from the last yeah, episode, was, which it? gave me even more like 
joy and happiness to because that episode wasn't even like bro so basic yeah but that's what that's that's what we've always this is the thing like our episodes have been basic sometimes we used to put a bit of pressure on each other maybe you, you put more pressure <laughs> on me and it was like through episodes you're like oh, energy's not right and I was just like cool but like almost like I can it give what, what I'm is. giving you that day likewise you know life's life sometimes you don't come in like booming with energy and, and you've got stuff to deal with so then having to jump on the mic and you know um, but I think that's the authentic FG what we signed up for was you and I having a conversation like a very nice like halal conversation and not, not talking any crud just purely obviously Dean pops up here and there but we crack a few jokes and, and we, we keep it we keep it light we know we've got some viewers and you know the reason we started this because we want people this you know use this as an alternative for music and listening to nonsense we want it to be a nice escapism but in a nice healthy you know halal environment and in you know, a good way Um and so when we shot the last episode, it was just like that we didn't make any particular effort to talk about anything. We just sat and spoke. Little I milkshake uh, story was funny. Yeah, just the feedback's funny. good, and that, that that and that's like cool. That like, there is no pressure with this. It's you and I having a catch up, and um, sometimes sometimes we talk about some things. Sometimes other things come up, and it's just always just quite light hearted and easy and and relatable and and soft and not offensive. And I'm, it's so nice to be a part of something that you can't really get offended by. Um, that's what's so important to me. Yeah, and that's yeah. That, that's what we started. That's 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 the that's the the start of this. We wanted to create something not offensive that anyone can listen to, and ultimately you can't really complain. I might I might mention flat Earth here and there, and think of the odd thing about NASA, but <laughs> but you can't. But you learn your lesson. You learn your lesson <laughs> yeah, when they start emailing you. You learn your lesson. I'm sorry, NASA. But I stand by that anyway. Um, but um, <laughs> but um, bro, that's what that's what Freshly Grounded was, and uh, obviously over the years it's it's changed in so many ways, in so many yeah. amazing ways. Um, but just kind of bringing it back to like that kind of authentic you and I having a conversation, um, not even with a guest, you and I just having a conversation, a little bit of banter, a little a few jokes and kind of like a, like I said, an easy conversation, but people like it, man. And um, people really like it. So reading the re reading the, re the response uh, is great. And it's just that it confirms that it's something that I do need to make a bit more time for because it's an hour or two of, of one day. But the, 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 the benefits and the... Um, and the knock-on effect, I think, goes goes very, very far. Um, alhamdulillah. So yeah, I think it's I think it's important. I think it's my my duty now. And I'm saying it now. This is going to be an episode. My duty now to to show up a bit more. Although we can't actually, we're never going to be in this environment again. Never. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure we will. Well, but it's all well we're not very gonna, rare, we're not yeah. necessarily going to be in. Well, maybe inshallah, we're not going to be in London together. Yeah. This is this is what Freshly Grounded was. You and I in the studio chatting and London was a huge element of it wasn't it as well because of culture like we were both born and brought up like yeah. in and around London in and around so. London me just outside London you yeah. were a proper London boy but yeah like bro we like made a lot of sense and um, what I'm saying is like uh, I'm thrilled to be back on here because it's it's my honour it's amazing that the feedback we've had as well um, and I think you you breaking the news to me which I'll let you explain in it shortly where, you know, what your plans are um just yeah, gave me a little reminder, really. Like I said, it made me think. Actually, I can't take this whole thing for, for, for granted because ultimately, bro, this this could be weighing very heavy on the day of judgment, man. Real talk, to get too deep, but it's a uh, it's a lot of goodness, man. There's a lot of a lot of goodness, and, I, and I've seen that from years of of different emails and messages from people saying, like you you, you your example you read out. But there's been many, and I'm sure you know, there's been many, 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 both in our email, uh, our DMs, and whatever else. So look, I think it's my duty, really, to uh, to show up and have a chat. It's not really much to ask, is it? That means a lot, man. And uh, I, uh, I have always believed that freshly grounded, the true essence of freshly grounded, freshly grounded truly is freshly grounded when it's you and I having a chat. And whether that's even like now where there's not even a single other person in the room. Like uh, I, uh, as much as it's grown, bro, it's always remained the same in that it's we've stick a camera on a tripod. Mm. And before it was that... That, as you mentioned last week, that camera that would go off every 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've never consistently really had like a producer, mm -hmm. although we've had lots of help from Red and Nate and Omar's always been very kind and let us use his stuff basically. Yeah. Um, but it's just been me, you and a camera. Mm. And uh, as it's grown, it's always remained me, you and a camera. And I think that's always been my favorite episodes. And uh, so, and I've always hopefully wanted you to feel like it is um, regardless of uh, where Freshly Grounded has gone and you've been very generous in always allowing me to run my vision of it I've always wanted you to feel like it's still your yours and your project and I hope that you have felt like that and I think uh, the fact that you um, are jumping back on um, hopefully that, if it, that, that that makes me feel happy because it makes me feel like you do still feel like 
uh, FG is yours. You know what I mean? Because I've always wanted to feel like that. So that that's they're the most special episodes to me. And I've um, yeah, I, I think I can deep dig d- deep into that because I do want to maybe. I've never spoken. So the audience have always kind of said, what situation with Sam? Where's Sam? When's Sam gone? And, and kind of even asked me my opinion of it. And I've always avoided it. But I think I'll, I'll talk about it because it's never been anything that I've ever wanted, been uh, needed to hide. Yeah. But I think I've done that because I wanted to, um, I don't know, like whether it's protect FG as a brand, protect me, protect you. And and I've always known that, alhamdulillah, along with we've always had a great relationship outside of Freshly Grounded. Mm. And since it started to now, and there's never been a situation where, alhamdulillah, other than the Uber versus black cab drivers, mm. we've never even had an argument. Nah, you're right. And that was on camera. And that was minor. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Um, Alhamdulillah, that feels nice because I think there probably has been speculation like have they had like disagreements and stuff. And I'm really happy to say that we haven't. No, not at all. I think in an ele- in one end, I also wanted to protect that as well. Yeah. Um, but look, the announcement is that yes, I uh, essentially I am moving, mm-hmm. uh, and Freshly Grounded is moving, mm-hmm. and that's to Dubai. And um, I'm, pa- I'm pa- yeah, I'm packing up and, and leaving, and that's why I've been in Dubai for three weeks. Obviously, mm-hmm. just before Ramadan, mm-hmm. I've been sorting out visa and housing and all that kind of stuff. And I've come back to basically pack up the studio, pack up my family, take my kids with me and make the move. Wow. Uh, that's what's happening, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and it's and, it, and I've been thinking about it for about three years. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I just remember when you and I went to Dubai all those times ago, you were constantly talking, assessing, reviewing yourself moving out there. Yeah. I was kind of at the same time saying, yeah, it'd be nice. You can get the Uber helicopter, all the stuff you yeah. showed me. <laughs> but um, I remember you you were talking about it like a, in a very uh, sincere way that you were like, I really would like to come out here. It's very me. Obviously, there's the tech there. There's big buildings there, <laughs> all of that. But um, I remember. So when you told me, it's like, yeah, fair play, man. It's it's uh, it's not a huge surprise. And I remember how much you really, really. Um, I loved I loved love Dubai it. when we went. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it wasn't a huge surprise in the in the sense that fair enough. It's definitely an amazing lifestyle out there for you. Um, s- slightly jealous that uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm left in the UK. I think you'll be the. I think you're gonna make the jump in Charlotte. Well, I'm gonna definitely come and stay with you. Yeah. And if you can, yeah. Who's who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but what a place, what a place to, to be. And it's very exciting, man. Yeah, so I, okay, so I, I, I've been thinking about it for about three years. It's, yeah. not, it's not a hasty decision. Yeah. And over those three years, uh, me and my wife have gone there together and seen it and like imagine living there and be like, yeah, finally we come back. And then we're like, oh no, actually like we're settled here. And obviously we have family here. And then when we, at one point we kind of was like, okay, let's do it. And then um, I think maybe Khalil was, we, we, we maybe we found out we're pregnant uh, or she was pregnant <laughs> with Khalil mm-hmm. around that time and stuff. And so there's always been like, it's, it's it's a lot easier to stay than it is to leave. Of course. And so um, my gauge for it was when the house rent, because uh, when the tenancy agreement runs out, yes, yes. we have to move anyway, let's move to Dubai. Mm-hmm. And so that came round and then I was like, we're going to move and then we didn't. I was like, oh, do you know what? I'll just extend it because we're not ready and maybe I'll do a break clause. So then I asked my landlord for a break clause for six months so then I was like, okay, this is maybe like a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, instead of moving to Dubai, can I just get a six month break clause in my tenancy agreement? And that way I don't have to wait another year to leave. I can leave in six months. And then six months came around and then um, it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel like the right timing. And then I kind of made excuses because my six month tenancy agreement ended in October, but you have to give, I didn't realize you have to. So I was thinking, okay, we can leave in October, but then you have to give two months uh, notice so then it's December okay. and it's like well it's going to be hard to do a move in December because nobody it's hard to get housed in December because of obviously the uh, in England obviously because yeah. they do Christmas and stuff mm-hmm. um, so my landlord said to me look just don't leave me out on like don't 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 leave in December because that's hard for me to get sure. tenants in and I thought alright fine so um, anyway then what happened is it fast forward to November four months ago six months ago whenever November was right and um, in November I was like oh it's November that feels like the end of the year and end of the year feels like okay my tenancy agreement is coming up early next year so my tenancy agreement is in April right like now so in November I was like all right you know what it's so long away April that if I just start the process now um, you know what's like I'll just do it and then forget about it and alhamdulillah, I made I played this Takara and bro, just there were so many um hurdles and Allah just like made all of them easy. And before you know it, bro, I had a visa in my hand. And I was just like kind of going through the process. And then I was like, wow, um so look, the 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 I suppose I should explain the reason because the the yeah. the, the, the process is the process, right? Mm. Um but the reason I suppose 
is um, is multi-layered. So it's hard to give one reason. And some of them are private, obviously, and personal. Um, but it, it, I can talk about the reason for Freshly Grounded. And I was in a situation where for a while I was unhappy with how Freshly Grounded was going. And the main reason for that was because I, my favorite episodes were the episodes of you and I, I felt like that was what Freshly Grounded was. And then over the year or two after that, I was always kind of um, trying to feel that. And so I would do, for example, when we would do the episodes with me and you, which we would do, mm. and especially in lockdown, we did a few of them and stuff mm. like that. It always felt great. Yeah. And in between that, I'll try and fill it with other episodes that are similar. And so the only person that ever felt like um, that vibe was Adam Afghan, large up Adam Afghan, because he's an amazing guy. And other name of Adam, who is a full-time, he full-time works in IT and stuff. So... Um, I actually approached Adam about like jumping on podcast full time and Qadr Allah Huma Alhamdulillah because of what's happened he, he wasn't able to at the time although he loves Fresh Ukraine and is happy to jump on more episodes and stuff so um, I was kind of back down to like um, square one and I could see Men's by are growing and I could see more of a realistic situation where it's n perhaps going to be a situation where uh, um uh, by the way, I'm not putting the move of Dubai onto Men's by onto you at all because that's sure. what it sounded like. <laughs> but I'm saying like that was my favorite FG. Mm -hmm. I'm saying since then because initially when we started the interview, so since then um, I've been trying to get whatever it is. It didn't have to be with Phase One Sam. It was yeah. just I was trying to get the FG that I was proud of, waving mm -hmm. a flag on, mm -hmm. and and it seemed like I was only ever getting that with either you or the one-off episodes with Adam. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so then I thought. Okay, so then we started doing interviews. And I was like, well, maybe we can do that if we get big interviews. And then what started happening is I started maxing out. When I, when I got like, um, so you get, you with the interviews, you get like your, the people in and around you. So like your community. So you got like Yahya Rabi, who's amazing yeah. and um, all the great people around FG. Yeah. And then I wanted to get a level up to like, celebrities right so yeah. then we got like Mufti Meng Sunny Bill Williams yeah. Dan Juma was huge for the podcast yeah. and I think everybody knows how much he supports podcasts because on social media may Allah bless him like, we've literally got Dan Juma's signed t-shirt here in the studio and I've got another one I'm putting in the Dubai studio as well I'm from sure. Champions League and he's been such a big part of it in, the in terms of the support and to be honest bro he's done stuff for FG behind the scenes that people don't know about and um, I will always be grateful for him like he loves FG first and foremost he was a listener before he even he got fame and that meant a lot to me and so that, so my point is that there was key parts that like meant big and then mm -hmm. but then I thought in, in FG was I thought in England we've maxed out what we can do at FG yeah. if um, like in terms of guests yeah. like we've got Moeen Ali, like the Muslim, like cricketer, like the, the epitome of Muslim cricketers. Then we've got like Sunny B. Williams, that the other yeah. one. And then other than I was thinking like, you know, Mo Salah and who I've tried to get in our podcast and realized how difficult it is. Yeah. So other than like Mo Salah, Sadi Mani, I was like, well, where, where have we got to go? And I started feeling like the interview Freshly Grounded was like, um, it was like just a normal, any other podcast. Like if some man comes on a podcast and we interview him, what's different about that and Fresh Grounded? And what I wanted, my goal for Fresh Grounded was even if we were going to have someone to come on as an interview, that it would be a really fun interview. So it would be like, okay, Mufti Menk on a podcast is Mufti Menk on a podcast. I can't wait to see Mufti Menk on FG because that's going to be Mufti Menk hair back, right. chilling, having a laugh with the boys. And that we didn't manage to accomplish that because it, it ended up just being me interviewing someone. And so I was like, if I'm not happy, I love Fresh Ground, I love what it stands for, I love the community it's built, but I want the content to always be the best. And the, uh, bro, the, the idea of Fresh Ground content was, was vibes. That's all it was, like yeah. high energy vibes. So people could listen, relax, have a laugh and not, again, not offend anyone. It could be Islamic in the sense that it's all halal. Yeah. And so I was like, we're getting that halal element, but we're not getting the vibes element. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, um, what could, how could we, I, I, I felt like it was make or break. I was like, if we carry on Fresh Ground like this, what's going to happen is the views are just going to go down. People should be like, all right, Fresh Ground is what it is. And there's going to be, um, like, it's going to take you, the funds going to go. So I was like, how can I make it like that again? And I was thinking, let me do something big and bold. Let me try and get the biggest guests in the world. And where are the biggest guests in the world? Um, 
Bode in Dubai, like in our world. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. our world, Dubai is the center. It's like where all the content is being created. Yeah. It's like Formula One is happening there now. Cricket World Cup's happening there now. The World Cup's happening in the Middle East. Like people are, but remember the time where like uh, boxers, for example, it would be like the high, the biggest thing is, can you do a boxing event at Wembley Arena? Yeah. Bro, no one comes London now. Yeah. It's like the biggest events, bro. Like Anthony Joshua's fighting, um, his fights in the Middle East you know what I mean so it felt like a good and technology there is like going six. so it felt like a time where I was like you know what bro um, that feels right it feels like if we want to go big with FG we've got to go to where it's going to be at and so I, I was like that's what we're going to do and uh, the plan for FG is yeah hopefully try and like get because look we also don't lose the London guests by the way because the you know the most popular flight the most the most regular flight taken in the world is London to Dubai so bro everyone's you know everyone's always in and out of mm, Dubai yeah. so I can I can catch them when they're there when they're there I can yeah, get the people yeah. who are there local and also like from America and it's like the other Mike yeah. so we remember we was like Mike Tyson be the biggest guest yeah. but that's so much more realistic now being in Dubai. Because Tyson's in, like everyone's there. So yeah. like with Tyson's manage, uh, like one of Tyson's best friends who's been on his podcast, Ahmed Abdullah, bro, he's like all his, like he's always in Dubai. And so that link is a lot easier in Dubai. And, and he's such a great guy as well. And he he would do that for us, do you know what I mean? So he'd get Mike Tyson on there for us. That's, Mike Tyson's one person away from us. You know what I mean? Getting him on the podcast is mad. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, um, Either from the vibes element, um, there's good brothers out there who are, may Allah bless them. I'll mention it by name, there's a guy called Kaya, who's on podcast about two or three weeks ago, and he said that uh, he's basically gonna help me um, by so uh, helping us basically in Fresh Uganda. So, yeah, they, they, I've gone on for ages, but yes. that's like kind of a complete. So, you have a, you have a game plan for when you get there? I have there. a game plan, yeah. When is it going to be your first episode when you get there? Um, so, we're gonna take at least a month off. Yeah. I need to set up the studio. Um, feet. I need to find my feet. I need to set my family in. Yeah, because my family is making this big move with us. And so, uh, in in the London date of the podcast, in the London date of the Fresh Uganda tour, I ended the tour with a message to my wife. And so, there's like we're in a twelve hundred man theater, a black stage, spotlight on me. And I ended the tour by like, and my wife didn't know it was a surprise. And I just literally said like, in life, you always need with Sam. Like you have big dreams and aspirations. And as a man, you don't, for some reason, I last put something in us where we're not scared of risk and we love trying to get bigger and better. But I signed up for that because that's what I want for my life. And I, but my wife didn't sign up yeah. for that. And, um, but she's been by my side the whole time. May I bless her. I mean, and so I wanted to say thank you to her. And I said that, because the whole theme of the tour was, um, I started the tour by saying that, uh, by saying, showing a picture of the last words my granddad ever wrote to me, <coughs> which was, Faisal, be happy in your whole life, your granddad. And then he died a few days later. And so I carry that with me. His message to me was, be happy. He's my best friend. Mm. And so I said at the end of the tour that my granddad did something for his family where he thought he would he could give them a better life. And he picked up, packed up his bags and he moved to another country. Mm. And he just thought, I'm going to, and, and because of that, I can be here in front of you guys mm. right now. And I said yeah. that, um, today I stand here in front of you guys telling you that um, I'm going to follow my grand's footsteps I'm packing up my bags packing up my family and I'm moving to another country and um, and I just and I, the last words on the tour because that could have been our last ever event mm. that my last words on that tour was to my wife and I said I love you just wow. like being me, yeah. it's emotional it was emotional yeah fair play I wanted to dedicate it to her because yeah. bro like things have been tough with FG and as you know we've been business yeah yeah. yeah, if we're real, bro, yeah. trying to get a podcast to be financially stable where you're paying salaries yeah. is hard in itself. Doing it when you're not turning on YouTube ads, sure. when you're not taking on certain sponsors, so almost no sponsors, is almost impossible, bro. And it's sometimes like month to month, bro. And like, um, but alhamdulillah, we've been able to make it work and inshallah, bigger and better things. But um, yeah, man. That was long, bro, wasn't it? But that's everything. You literally put it all out on the table, mate. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't gonna. I'm glad you did. I think the people deserve to have have that real conversation. Amazing. Yeah. So, so what an exciting thought of a whole new life starting for you. Yes. Yeah, obviously scary. Very. Yeah. Because people go to Dubai with a package and a. a sure. Yeah, I have this thought this that, many times. Yeah. I rate it because like. Yeah, I've got another good friend of mine is going out there and starting a new life for him and his family, taking his two boys and his wife. And I just think like 
me with what I do. Obviously, if I had a if I had a shop there that was doing well, like it makes more Which sense. Which you will, inshallah. Inshallah, definitely, hundred percent, many. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just is 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 there's risk there. There's definitely you have to have a lot of faith in your in yourself. Yeah. Um, but I firmly believe you're definitely someone who can definitely achieve it and be extremely successful for the reasons that you mentioned. There's, it's the land of opportunity, Dubai, really, isn't it? Yeah, so um, I've started another company there as well. Yeah. Um, which is like a branding agency. Okay. Um, which I'm not entirely sure like the direction that's going to go, but I have a branding client in Dubai, which is why I've been there quite regularly the last few years and stuff like that. So, Do you have plans to do anything else over there? Uh, I don't know why now. There's opportunities that come my way, alhamdulillah. I'm nice. trying to figure out which best, which opportunities are best for me. Cool. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Exciting. So when you're settled, let me know because I'm going to come and stay in one of your spare rooms. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm allowed, maybe I'll stay in the studio. Um, you show me the place. Looks looks great. Is it going to be similar colours and everything? In the studio? Uh, so I've got the I've got the wallpaper put up in the studio. You have already. It's, yeah, stone wallpaper. Okay, stone. So moving. Okay, cool. Because I was going to paint it black, yeah. which was my aim. Yeah. But then I was like... I still um, really associate this with the colours of FG, to be honest. Purple? Yeah, purple. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to try and find somewhere. So I've got purple in there. You have got purple. So what I've done is... The, the reason... I, I went to black wool because black wool, I think, I always look nice. Like every studio yeah. I've tried to paint the wool black. Yeah. Uh, but the problem with this space was, it's a lot easier to get, take wallpaper down than to paint black wall back to white. Right. So I was okay. like, you know what? When yeah, we're done with the studio, we can just rip the wallpaper off. So I went with stone wallpaper. Nice. And then I've got a sign made mm -hmm. that's specially grounded, but it's got a it's neon sign. Oh, nice. And it's got purple neon light. Oh, great. It. Cool. Yeah. So, so that's sick. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, I feel like I've like just like overspoken, spoken so much, but no, I think it was relevant, man. You said a lot, but it was uh, people needed to hear it. The uh, what made me really happy was when after we spoke, mm. uh, you said let's jump on an episode, let's talk about some stuff, and then you we, then you very kindly uh, cut my hair, and uh, when we were speaking, you kind of said that you feel like you're back and I don't think anything other than like having my two children has made me as happy as that because bro the love I have for the love, first of all the love I have for Freshly Grounded is like in part um uh, uh what is the word um conditional because mm -hmm. it's like I love Freshly Grounded because of you in a huge element in a huge way obviously because of people and stuff but like mm. it, we made it together and then secondly the love I have for you like I, I can't put into words bro like, honestly I can't like I, I, I you're one of my favourite people in the whole world honestly appreciate that and um, a huge part of it is even that chemistry because uh, two things that chemistry I've not got with anybody else mm -hmm. not got with anybody else not one other person in the world and I think people notice that and they see that and stuff like mm -hmm. why they loved the, those episodes yeah and then secondly um you uh, you know before I, I said to you about Freshly Grounded I came with the idea I, I came to so many people with that idea bro and um, oh, I feel like I'm gonna get emotional now which I don't want to do Spill, go on. but I came to so many people with that idea of Freshly Grounded not so many people but a few people that I respected and rated and they had the, they like had already got they was already they already had a following and stuff and um, bro, they was like, I remember at one point I was outside this mosque and I was speaking to someone we I know on the phone, I was telling the idea. And they were like, who's gonna listen to uh, people talking for like an hour and a half? And then I came to you with the idea and you didn't even understand the world of <laughs> YouTube, let alone podcasting. No. And, you, and, you were, and you were building this huge empire. And for some reason you said yes. And you essentially like believed in me and what you saying, yes, you probably was, you was walking down the street at that point, yeah, right? Yeah. Like I, d I remember where I was, I do remember you. I remember where I was, literally remember yeah. exactly where I was. Yeah. I remember exactly where I was. I was in my, in my bedroom, in my mum's house, um, like about to get um, married in about three or four months time. Can't even afford a yard to like bring my wife into. So I'm probably gonna be staying in my mum's house. And I'm pacing around that that bedroom and I'm like pitching and you were on it. And I believed in it from that moment in Freshly Grounded. But the fact that you didn't know about Freshly Grounded, you didn't know about podcasts, you didn't know about YouTube, but you believed in me. I believed in you, yeah. And, um, and now, look bro, like Alhamdulillah, we, I've literally been able to sustain my kids and my family off of it. And I think for that reason, I always feel like I'll be in debt to you. And I've literally got tears in my eyes, you can probably see. So I really appreciate that, but because I'd, I'd literally, 
bro, the only two people, um, like obviously outside of parents and stuff, mm. I think the only two people, and I feel bad saying this because there's probably lots of others like Kareem and so on sure. and so forth, but the two people that come to mind that I think have like done that for me is you and Omar. And Omar's my brother. So he has to kind of in a way, like he doesn't have to, he's also a very nice man, but he has not a reason to, you had no reason to. And man, like, I think um, I'm always, I thank you for that, man. So when you said you're back on FG, bro, I'm like, bro, that's, that's everything, bro. And I don't care, regardless of where I am, bro, because I still believe that Dubai is the best place for us because of the guest thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, we, I think it's realistic now we're going to get hopefully a sober Mike Tyson on the podcast and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't, but I think, um, I, I have two <laughs> beliefs. I have one belief is that we can make the virtual episodes work. Now yes. after COVID's happened, I yeah. can see that that's very realistic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then secondly, I believe that you're going to be in Dubai bro, in a few years time, inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. make Dubai. Uh, I appreciate the words, man. Yeah. It all praise to Allah, bro, because uh, when I met you in Gambia, bro, there was, uh, there's something special about you. I'm not going to go back and forth saying nice things about each other too much. But um, when I met you in Gambia, bro, there's something very special and we clicked. And we had a very like, late night conversation. Do you remember? Josh was coming in and out, but we were over where, where I was staying. And we had to, basically the first night we started speaking and we went through everything. We went through everything. You, you explained everything. We, we, we basically got to know each other. Yeah, you took a lot of interest as well. Yeah, I was just very interested. I was very interested in what you were doing. Um, and bro, like, I don't know. I've got no control of it, bro. It was just something that I put in my heart, man. And to this day, I vouch for you. Um, and uh, yeah, got you got you back till the day, till the day we die, bro, 100%. I think I think the biggest thing, the lesson that I've taken from that is like in integrity and integrity of character. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm I have the most integrity, uh, but what I will say is, um, there's small things in life, and small decisions you make that you feel like maybe no one sees, and but 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 those decisions, even though that nobody might see them, they um, show. In they come out in your exterior. They show in your in your in how you are. It's like when you read the Quran. Naturally, you you it shows in your actions, in your limbs. And I think when you have a person, when you're a person of integrity, and you make those decisions in private. When you decide to um, never have music on freshly grounded, or, or even, I mean, even more private stuff, right? Like individually, then um, that integrity shows in your limbs. And I think that. Uh, uh, hopefully I have integrity with you and, and you definitely have integrity with me. Like I, 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 but I, I, I wouldn't, I could never fathom a situation where I could imagine that Sam has, has backbitten me and to know that and to feel very safe in a friendship is probably one of the best feelings in the world. So yeah, but I'm gassed that you're going to be back on it. We just got to figure out logistics, but I just sure. like, sure. I don't want it to be a situation where now this is the last episode of London, like it's not, we don't do... We don't nah, do it's not that. I wouldn't, bro, I've, I've just said it all that I'm back. I literally said that. I know that people are watching and they're going to, if I if I go back on that, that's that's my character, that's a flaw. No, but I know that technology is not your strong point. So I've got to sure, figure out something, how we can make sure you can help Make it easy that. for me. Just let me do iPad or the phone. Yeah, iPad phone Don't make it easy. complicated and make it easy. We did it in, in lockdown or whatever. Maybe we'll do something a little bit. We'll, no, we'll have a chat. What we'll, we did we'll, in lockdown was perfect. Fine, I can do that. No problem at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, bro, look, I'm, I'm, I'm back in the sense that I'm, I'm more than happy to do episodes with you um, and give that time to Freshly Grounded, give that time to the people. Um, I'm going to make time for it in my, in my schedule, 100% inshallah. inshallah. And hopefully that means that we can get me flown out to Dubai at some point yeah, and do that whole do that whole thing. It'd be nice yeah. to shoot a couple of episodes there. In man. person, yeah. Yeah, we did a couple out there before. It'd be nice to redo that. In a proper studio. And proper studio well, yeah. with, the, with the purple um, neon light. Yeah, I'm thinking about changing it back to um, the table being this way. So we're facing. To we're facing. Yeah. Okay. How we, come? I prefer this. I prefer this. But um, the problem with this is, uh, oh, okay, I could do this, but then I can't have the two angles. The way the studio is, is what's behind me is not attractive. What's behind you is not attractive. Fine. So then we wouldn't be able to do the two individual shots. So we can do it like this if the camera stays like that, like how it is in this episode. Why do you prefer the two individual shots? Because um, you see the people crispier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love just this is for me. I, that's the best you can just see both see people. Both. Yeah. yeah, both. I'm I, I, wonder what, I wonder what the followers think. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. I like. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I came in and I've actually put my foot down a little bit today. I've told you a couple a couple of things. I've obviously said that I want to talk about Dubai, and I've said I want you to move these cameras and, and just have one. So I feel like you're finally listening to me. It feels good. Finally, it feels yeah. like I've got a bit of a bit of authority around here for do, a while. Yeah. Do you? Um, was there anything else that you feel like is important to talk about in this episode? that I cut your hair for the first time. For the second time. 
well, yeah, but really for the first time. The first, the, the second, the first, sorry, the first time I did it, what well, years and years ago, it was yeah. quite light, wasn't it? It was like a little, little light taper. It wasn't even a proper yeah, skin fade. This was, I feel like this was a proper. I took you on as a client. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. sat you in my chair. Yeah. Um, and I just think that's that's history in itself because that I've, I've avoided itself. that for five years. Yeah. Um, but that just goes to show how much I, I appreciate you and I'm going to miss <laughs> yeah. you. So let me give you, let me show you what I could have been doing for the last five years. <laughs> but um, yeah, and everybody complimented that haircut. I, like I said, the, I put my all into it. The one comment on the live stream episode was nice haircut. <laughs> <isn't it?" laughs> That's ridiculous. I've been what? getting people like asking me for advice on hair now. Why was there only one comment? <laughs> it was it was just like a quick live stream. I know, I watched it. The, like I said, I, I watched it. And you fell asleep doing it. Yeah, but I did. But like, you know when you're like afternoon when you've been fasting, you've got a bit of free time. I was listening to like something like Nice and Islamic and I was, it was just so relaxing. Almost just, I drifted off. Did you hear my thought, voice? Did you hear? Yeah. I woke up to something totally different. I was like, right, how long have I been asleep for? It does look good actually, the haircut, doesn't it? The Bro, I would say it like it. humbly. It looks the best you've ever looked. Is, is, is one right point I like the fact that um, Beard strong, thanks, fade bro. strong, hairline strong. So this episode is going out uh, and a couple of days before Eid. Okay, amazing. So uh, Eid Mubarak. Bro, is this the last time we're going to see each other until I go to Dubai? It is, isn't it? Realistic. No, 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 haircut, no, no, no you just booked in for another haircut, yeah. yeah. That's going to be the last time. Yeah, that will be the last time. But this is, this is, this is, this is a big deal for me, man. Like, yeah. this is the last time we're shooting an episode in London. Let's be honest, this is, this is what the essence of FG is. And obviously things are going to change slightly. Obviously a different studio, a different country will be the same, but... This is the this is a big day. Did you always feel affiliated with Freshly Grounded even when you took a big um always kept gap. my eye on it. Always very do you know what very, very aware that I was part of the foundations with it. Um I did see it go in different different directions. I love um, Made Halal by the way. I think it's so really? sick. I love it, man. I've watched I think I watched all of them. I really? love it. I really like it. It's a shame that I'm ashamed that that's stopping because I actually yeah. really like it. Um but yeah, always obviously kept my eye on it. Um, it was it was more just like on my list of priorities. Have I've had a mad couple of years. No, of just course. had to get put to to the side. But you'd be surprised how many messages I get and have had this whole time about freshly grounded. You really would be surprised. Every time I do a questionnaire, there's there's ten plus people asking, "Are you going back on freshly grounded?" There's DMs of freshly grounded. There's this. I've always felt like a part of it because, you know, I am a part of it, and uh, we 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 started it together. And it was I, I won't forget all that. All those Thursday mornings coming into um, into West London to 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 shoot it and uh, it just bro I had almost had no control over it if that makes sense so busy having children having businesses but like it was so like essential that I would make that trip that's mad isn't it and the guilt that I had having to explain to you like I remember one or two times I was I couldn't do it for whatever reason I remember just feeling so guilty that I was letting no. you down letting the people down no, but I had no control of it man you got like, don't thank me you got to thank the thank Allah man because. It's just one of the, it's just a, it's just a, a tool that he's used to hopefully benefit people, bro. And to be a part of that is something very special. You know, um, uh, on that, um, when people would ask me, uh, they always do. Whenever I want to be about fish grounded, like where's Sam? Like what situation is Sam when he's come back? And I, I'm, I would always say to them the truth, which is, I say, bro, Sam's FG, bro. And I would say that um, we always had an agreement, and understanding, and I believe we did that the priority has to be men's by because that's essentially what's putting food on the table for you and your family. And actually, I'm going to say something now that no one knows in public and you're going to hate me for saying, but I don't care, I'm saying it. But ever since Freshly Grind started, when Freshly Grind started day one, I said to Sam, I said, Sam, Freshly Grind is going to be big and we will be able to eat off it, inshallah. But that's not the intention, as in like, we start. We genuinely, I believe, started Fresh Grounded and still do Fresh Grounded because we want to make an impact on the community. But if we're taking this much time out doing something, it's going to take all of our time and we have to be able to eat, right? And I said, we'll be able to eat. You mean getting paid? Get paid, yeah. yeah. Um, and Sam said, and he's always made consistent with this, from the beginning he said, bro, I'm not doing this for the money. If it makes money and you're gonna and 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 that's gonna happen alhamdulillah but i don't i don't uh, i'm not doing this for money and you would come week in week out and and there was no money there's no money there was no money involved and um i want people to know that because that that that's the integrity part that i was speaking about also bro um so i would say to people sounds part of fg and i would say that we like at the uh, i was like he's building men's bar and you know what bro people didn't even really question that because they knew because you can see the growth of men's bar people are like, wow like and they would rate it bro and um i would always get so happy when people would tell me and this happened regularly when they would say that oh i go to men's bar now that would always make me happy alhamdulillah there's a lot of yeah 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 alhamdulillah yeah and then often uh, it yeah. works both ways, man. It's complimented. Even obviously, when I had the cafe, it, compl it co this complimented that so much. And the amount of people that people travelled from other countries to come That's and mad. visit Fifty Nine, that was mental. Mad. People came with suitcases. They come just to check it out. That's mad. I thought, wow, 
not a wasted trip, but <laughs> yeah, well, it's wasted quite trip. Small right, days of a wasted trip. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but it just shows the support, man. I had I like, bro. Like, I remember a sister came. I wasn't even there. Sister came in, brought loads off the menu, left me an, an envelope of a hundred pounds, saying, "Spend however you want. Thank you for everything you're doing for Freshly Rounded." Wow. Little things like that, bro. Like that's amazing. Goes a long way, man. That's amazing. Never even know who it knew who it was. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Loads of little things. And yeah, bro, look. Do you know what it is? There's there's, there's dunya and there's hereafter, man. And for me, this isn't like, this isn't dunya for me. This is like giving up my time for hopefully that I can say something in a subtle way, even if I'm just saying Alhamdulillah, bro, hopefully that can be an inspiration to someone and it can it can make someone think about their existence and, and the deen and whatever else. And I know for a fact it's, it has. So I know for a fact that it's, like I said, my duty to try and stay connected to it because I believe this could be something that will benefit me in hereafter, not necessarily so much in dunya. That's what men inspire. But this is something that hopefully, inshallah, has, has going to give me some goodness for... When my time's up. Subhanallah, man. That's the real talk. I read that. Yeah, I read that, man. Wow, it's all out now, isn't it? <laughs> we've said a lot, man. Do you know what, bro? What I think I want to say is that um, even though we've said a lot, and it feels like we've uh, hidden some of this information, we've never hidden information. And like, no. even now, we're making this announcement. In fact, we're making this before the uh, thing is actually happening. In a and B, we're saying it before. Like. I was gonna announce this in June and we're saying it now. And I think that's been a common theme. We've always been transparent. But more than anything, bro, I think one of the beautiful things, and we'll talk about the positive in a second, but one of the beautiful things I think about Freshly Grounded is that uh whether we've had difficulty or what's happened to the recording? Oh no. It's fine. It's, it's only back up, but I still fine. want it. Um uh whether things have been good or things have been tough, we've always had that session on freshly grounded and the thing that comes to mind for me is when we had our first miscarriage and when zachary was born i we spoke about it on fresh grounded that was a really obviously monumental part of my life like i would never forget yeah. that no one forgets when they have a miscarriage and what when i said in that advert that you saw uh not that advert, but the, the video yeah. where we were saying taking a break when i said that you guys were there for me I, I, as a community. I even mean it in that, like, if people don't know they're there for me, but like you being there for me to speak to you about a miscarriage when it's a hard thing for a man to speak about to another man um, about his feelings and how upset he was and stuff like that. And then on top of that, to feel like that community of listeners are such a safe space that they're not even gonna, that they're gonna, they're gonna support and they're gonna listen and they're gonna listen with open arms. Mm. And, and that's what I felt. So even the tough times, bro, like we've both had tough times and we've been on a podcast and spoken about it. And then we've had amazing times and we've been on podcasts where like, I remember like there was a time for Shigani where like almost every week or at least every month, you was coming on the podcast and announcing a new store opening. And that was such an amazing time as well. So yeah, I think that we've had good times and bad times. And regardless, like we've always, Fresh Grind has been like the commonality between all of that, isn't it? And a safe space, having the listeners as a safe space, yeah. is it very true? I really do feel like that it is, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? There's, it doesn't feel like there's a, it just feels like a very positive community that people just, just, just yeah, just love it. And it's just mm -hmm. nice to be able to yeah, give something back and having these open conversations. So. And um, I, I feel like I, I'm, I feel like I speak very openly and this is an extremely like personal space, even mentioning my children's names and talking about what was, what's going on in my and life. And you're quite a private person. I'd like, yeah, I try to be as private as possible, but I feel like when I get in front of the mic with you, it uh, I open myself up and it, it almost becomes irrelevant. And I just feel like, I, yeah, I feel like I, um, Drop the barriers and, and and I'm very open and honest. Yeah, so yeah, it's I healthy. That. I think it's healthy. I feel that healthy for me. Okay, so uh, not to move topics, mm. but it is Eid in a few days when we release, when we release, release this. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, where's your Eid pads? Uh, I'm yet to confirm something, but I'm going to take my family away for a night or two, I believe. Oh, nice. Yeah. Same old, uh, same old, uh, boring, uh, uh, what? <laughs> what was it called? Was nah, that, nah, nah, nah. What's that place you go to every year? Sometimes I go, to, I don't every year. Centre Park. It's the same old times. boring centre. No, you find it boring. No, I don't actually. I've been very jealous every time you've gone yeah. and I've wanted to uh, go. And yeah. that's one thing I, I remember I used to tell my wife, like, we're going to go, we're going to go. And we haven't. And now I'm literally leaving the country. Yeah, you won't be able to go in Dubai. Yeah. I don't think they have them there. Uh, no, I haven't yet to confirm. She was talking about Disneyland Paris, but I'm not really on that to be fair. So I'm yet to confirm, but I'm going to do something definitely. Oh, like away, away, wow. That's what she was after. I think I'm going to maybe look for something a bit closer and easier and do something. But I'm definitely going to do something. I'm going to basically book a night or two. Um, and how, how many days are you taking off? When, uh, one or two, two or three. However however many, really. See what's going on. Do what I want. Yeah, ultimately. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Fine. Um, but there's still businesses to run, so I won't, yeah. take, I won't take the mic. But I've, I've got, look, I've got technically, like from my Lord, I've got three days to celebrate if I want. So if I want to yeah. use those days, that's fine. If, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what yourself? Oh, uh, my, it's, it's, it's crazy, as you can imagine, because we're leaving about a day or two after Eid. So I'm packing an entire house, kids, wife, business. We'll be able to see family and everything? Yeah, so I think, so my, uh, I've just found out my in-laws are doing like a big uh, Eid slash leaving dinner for us. Okay, They've nice. actually booked a venue. Cool. So um, that would be nice. And Is it the same venue you got married at? No, no, no. no. What venue uh, are you talking about? The one that I got married at? The like, one that I got Nikah? advice to. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't, to be fair, I didn't, like, uh, anyway. Uh, what do you mean? No. What, you didn't invite me? Huh? You didn't what? No, no, of course I invited you. I didn't know what we were talking about because we had like... like. Oh, sorry, no, I was only invited stuff. to the one of the things. I didn't realise there was more than one. No, actually. there wasn't one. Wasn't there was it? only one wedding. It's rude. There was only one wedding, but as in we had already had our nikah by then. I went to the party one. When I say party, I mean <laughs> lots of people segregated, yeah. but lots segregated, of people. Segregated, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no lots music, of, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, um, just curry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you came with Mahi actually, didn't you? And uh, did it was Josh, sure. yeah. Came with Josh. I, I remember Mahi being there as well. Was yeah, he? Josh. I think you, no, no Josh, just I, Josh. I don't think Josh could come. It no, was, Mahi was definitely there, I've got a picture. It, I've literally got a picture of no, Mahi. No, you haven't. I have a picture of Mahi there. That was probably the other one that you didn't invite me to. I'll show you. It was me and Josh went, just me and Josh. Just literally, it was just me and Josh. Who do I have a picture of Mahi at then? Ask Mahi. Like I said, you probably you, you probably invite him to the the <laughs> right. That is your wedding. That's that is your venue in the wedding. That's great. Just me and Josh. That Remember? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what right. I wore, and you didn't like that. I wore that. But I worked all day. It was what was it? It was December time. Wait, did wasn't I it? say I didn't like it? Yeah, no, you I must like, just said. Oh, you basically nice. criticised me. For no, I must just said. Well, I must just said. Oh, nice suit or something like that. I must I wasn't, I wasn't wearing a suit. Uh, you know, I was wearing. I mean, technically now it's quite strange, but um, I was working. So you were in a rain jacket and what jeans? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, Je- jeans. It's not, I mean, everyone else was even wearing a throw or a suit. It wasn't really. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a nice. I'm not going to say the brand, but it's a nice long jacket. It just yeah. wasn't necessarily what you'd expect at an Asian wedding. I think no. I um, it was either throbes or suits that night. But um, that that was there, bro. That was there. Do you remember this? You don't remember yeah. this, do you? Yeah, yeah I remember you that. I remember the venue. Did I? Yeah, you on my wedding. Yeah, I, I made, asked you to. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's nice. I, I said, can we get can we get a picture? And you're like, yeah. And I said, no, of me and Josh. Oh wow. Not really, not really. But you did take a picture. Yeah, exactly. Because I wasn't there. So there's you obviously in your raincoat and your jeans and your trainers and yeah. um, uh, Josh trainers. in his trainers, his trainers, his yeah, cap, sorry, his was, cap um, and his bomber jacket. So I mean, nice. yeah, I mean, you you chose to have your wedding on the busiest day uh, in history oh, yeah. for our shop, so we we actually left work early. And Why was it busy? Was it Eid or something? No, that wasn't Eid. It was uh, oh, Christmas time. Oh yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what they like? So I don't, yeah, I don't know about <laughs> the twenty. That's the twenty twenty fourth. You do the twenty fourth of December. Yeah, yeah, that picture yeah. was posted, um, and it must be the twenty third. Was it twenty third or twenty fourth? Twenty third. Yeah. So it was. I mean, I remember. Not not booking people in and um, I really appreciate that you came on your busiest day of your year. Yeah, I often think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Still thinking about how do I make that money back? Yeah. Um, uh, I so so I yeah, think sorry. so. My in-laws are doing that. Yes, yeah, sorry. And um, <laughs> and my I have a feeling uh, slash knowledge mm. that I think my family and my siblings are putting together some kind of like like semi surprise uh, oh, dinner nice. but not semi it's kind of semi surprise because like my sister's kind of keeping me in the loop like she's trying to figure it out but yeah, yeah. so that's nice cool. uh, and in the midst of all of that I'm obviously trying to pack the, everything so yeah. I'm trying to balance between being like grateful for that stuff sure. and also being like Focusing hey like, on getting yourself I've got to get a container that's shipping my sofa and my bed and everything over to another oh, country oh really is it you're taking yeah. your bed and sofa oh fair play yeah 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 so the, 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 how much the, is the container it, it works out as two. So the container works out Sorry, to two. No, 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 bro. Ask away, bro. I'll take yeah, everything out. The container yeah. works out to £2.50 per kilo. Cool. And How many keys are you taking? <laughs> so I don't understand that terminology. You should explain. You just told me it was. What does keys mean, though? What does that normally used in? Uh, so uh, what happened is, bro, is. Um, I looked online before I left and I basically weighed out pros and cons of if I, so my furniture, I own my furniture, Mashallah. like like most people do. Ma- like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't rent my sofa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fancy. Uh, so Proud of you. Because I own my, so- my furniture, right? Yeah. Uh, I have to either uh, do a couple things, either dispose of it, yeah. uh, put it in storage or take it with me. And I'm not disposing of it. Could have sold it. Uh, oh, yeah, I was sold Could it. Could have sold it and <laughs> yeah. reinvested it into getting another one on the other side. But. Well, that's a really good idea, actually. I didn't think about that one. That's just a hassle, though, for it's me. so easy to sell sofas and stuff on Gumtree these days. Uh, Sorry, yeah, in hindsight, on. you're right. Yeah. But I like my sofa. I really like my yeah, sofa. Yeah, it's a nice sofa, yeah. And... Um, uh, and I love my bed because you know with a bed like uh, uh, this time when we bought this bed I made mm. sure like let me buy a bed that's like the perfect yeah, bed yeah, for us so, yeah. um, so I was like okay if I uh, if I uh, I'm not disposing of it I checked out how much storage would be and it worked out to like £50 a week so you're paying that's £200 a, a month 
every month to store my sofa on my bed and that kind of stuff for an unlimited amount of time. Not unlimited, sure. but I don't know how long I'm going for. That's the problem. Does that mean you're going to come back? Uh, potentially, yeah, of course. Wow. I don't know. Okay, fair yeah. dude. Of course, of course, uh, yeah. of course. Of course. I, I don't you're know what's not, happening. Not sure inten- it's not your intention to come back, though, is it, necessarily? Um, you're, you're, I, I, I genuinely don't know. Yeah, I gen- Fine, you I've, have got to money, so yeah, I've got to figure it out. But um, Oh, that's exciting. So it could actually be a semi-permanent situation. Yeah. Oh, right. As in like I could come back? Yeah, as in like you're not always going to be living in Dubai for the rest of your life. But yeah, yeah, yeah for, sure, for, sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. I could definitely be back, bro. Like, um, you have to see how it goes. Yeah, we're trialing it. Sorry? I guess I guess trialing it. Trialing it, yeah, true. I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm being erratic. That makes me feel better. Yeah, well, you do. You look. You, all of a sudden, you don't look as pale. Relieved. Yeah, yeah. The colours come back in your skin. Yeah. Okay, so you're not forever. <laughs> Actually, I don't want to come back to Freshly Garden. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. In that case. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So okay, two pound fifty per ki- kilo. <laughs> and, uh, Good price. So I checked. I <laughs> I checked in Dubai how much stuff like a sofa would cost, how much a bed would cost. Yeah. And for uh, assuming my sofa is 100 kilos, which it's not, mm-hmm. but even if we overestimate, we say it's 100 kilos, that means it's going to cost me 250 pounds to ship my sofa. Yeah. Right. So I looked at what can I buy for 250 pounds in Dubai, mm. and uh, it, it's not the equivalent of what my sofa is now, Fine. essentially. Fine. So I would have to buy a second hand, lot worse sofa. Yeah. yeah okay. My sofa cost a thousand pounds. I don't know why. <laughs> It was gifted to me, I should say. Oh. Yeah, so it wasn't my money. But it was, um, when we moved out, um, uh, some very generous family members were like, oh, like, here's a cash gift. And I use that cash gift to buy so much. Sure. Um, so it's essentially going to cost me, it, it, uh, it, it would it, to get the equivalent so far, it would cost me a lot of money out in Dubai. Yeah, okay, So I'm sense. just shipping it. Makes sense. And, and same bed, with the bed. the bed. Yeah, bed. So, Anything um, else? Bed, sofa, clothes. Uh, clothes. Shipping Obviously those. Clothes, yeah. yeah. Uh, toys for the, so some of the kids' toys. Yeah. Uh, TVs. So there'll be a lot. You're you're not having the whole container. You're having like a little little part of it. I don't know how it works. Probably a little tiny part Just, of it. Yeah. TVs. Uh, TV I'm as well. Games console. No, I don't have a games console. You do. Uh, oh, uh, that one I've given away. <laughs> oh, mashallah. Yeah, but I don't. I don't. I haven't used a games console in. When I came round for that for that. Um... That iftar one time that everyone was playing on a games console. Iftar? You mean when I first moved into the house? Yeah, it was iftar that four years ago. It was the last time I got an invite. Oh, okay. Uh, no, actually, you came when Khalil was, Zachary was born. Of course I did. Oh, did you come when Khalil was born? Or was it Zachary? Nah, Zachary. So, um, Stop talking to me about that after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I am actually, yeah. I would like to get PS5 though, because do you know what? It was sometimes it's really nice, like the boys around FIFA, it's nice. Right? Mm. So yeah. shipping container. So I'm. Yeah. So also in the midst of all that, a I've car? got a shipping container coming. I haven't got a car. No, are you, can you ship the car? No, I, no, uh, I, I guess but I haven't looked at the car staying here. Are you selling it? No, my mum's gonna okay, use it for now. Owner. And then what I, you do the about thing car? is, the thing is, I, I, because I don't know how long I'm going for, when I'm coming back, and stuff like that. I, for now, I'd like the idea of when I, every time I come back, I have access to my car because I have kids and stuff. Yeah. So. Um, I'm not but I wouldn't get a lot for my car because it's like I've you got it in 20 now, yeah I own that and <laughs> no, you, uh, no you do though yeah yeah because yeah. I paid that off over a long time yeah, yeah 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 I remember yeah we had that conversation on previous episodes yeah, yeah. I used a website called interest free for cars Mashallah. so um, it meant that car was a bit more expensive yeah but I wasn't paying interest and I got that when I first got married so it's I paid got that up off. in value now to be fair uh, the car yeah I know the cars are depreciating assets, but I get like. But are they? The market's good. crazy for second hand cars. That's true, yeah. yeah that's true. true. Oh, you're right. Maybe. I know I'm right. Maybe right now I'd so get. No, Sam. The appreciation. Yeah. yeah. No, no, go and check the price. Yeah. No, but I wouldn't get what I paid for it, bro. Impossible. What did you pay for it? I'll tell you off air. I'm not going to give you that. You told me the sofa price. Yeah, this is a bit more than Fine, sofa. sorry, sorry. Uh, but, so anyway, it's not going to be worth <laughs> yeah, it. Okay. Um, so you're going to get a uh, Tesla out there, did you say? No. Uh, there, I haven't got a car. But I'll probably rent one, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Cause you, uh, you get the helicopter if you want. Yeah, the, uh, maybe not, but probably not. Good, you only told me about it in the first place. The the car situation basically in Dubai is that yeah. cars in Dubai are um, cheaper if you're buying, but yeah. renting wise they're quite pricey. Very I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm going to rent for now because buying is obviously a bulk amount of money. Isn't it about twenty grand to rent a Range Rover for a month? Yeah, it is, that's what I found anyway. It's quite a lot though. It's good, man. It's a, in, in, like it's nice. The whole look, bro, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I really like it out there in Dubai. Yeah, in, in clearly. In general, yeah. Clearly, <laughs> we're yeah. out there. And like uh, the the place that we're at, this I'm like ten minutes from a mosque. Yeah, a ten minute walk you from a mosque. Me. It looks beautiful. Um, yeah, and it's incredible. Like, you know Cairo, who used to work obviously here. Yeah. Um, he lives five minute walking distance from me. And like I said, uh, Kaya, who um, yeah. I haven't like, introduced you to properly, but Kaya's gonna help me out, help, help us out a lot with she. Man, I bless him and. 
Stuff like that, yeah. So they're incredible. So you know that vibe of Freshly Grind I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, like this vibe, the fun. Mm. My idea for guest episodes was that like we can show the guest in a way that they've never been seen before. So um, random person, Mo Salah, right? Like what's well, about a dream guest, right? Now you've seen Mo Salah int interviews online, on TV, everywhere. And I never want Fresh Grind to be a thing where it's like another Mo Salah interview. I want it to be like raw, Mo Salah's FG, I have to watch it you because they're vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to see the side of him where he's like with us, munching, cracking joke, talking about like, just like that vibe. And to get that vibe, I think you need a third person in the room. Because um, if it's me, now look, me, Mo Salah, interview. Yeah, of course. Me, Mo Salah, next man. Not next man, that's the Someone floor else. I want to worry. Because Kaya, and I hope, because I know he'll be <laughs> next listening. Man. No, I know he'll be listening to this episode as well. <laughs> Kaya has been such an amazing bro. Like, yeah. since I landed in Dubai, he's like, um, like literally like helped, looked after me. And even like, he's done so much for FG. So when I say next man, I wasn't talking about Kaya specifically. Yeah. I was saying, in, uh, like, I was saying random person. L look at how that changes, mm -hmm. right? So what we're doing is, me, for example, Salah, Kaya, and Kai is not going to be a co-host. He's going to be like um, halfway between like co-host and producer. So he's going to be kind of sat in like a producer area and he's going to add a lot of value to the podcast, which he does because he's so intelligent. Mm -hmm. He's got so much experience. He's funny. Uh, may Allah bless him. I mean, and so the vibe is going to be like me, Kaya, Mosada. And it's like, by doing that, what you're doing is you're allowing it to not be an interview. That's the intention. Do you think you have to prep the guest before you do that? Because they almost expect to almost be sat there and be interviewed. No, so the idea of FG is that we get it so big that it's like the guest is they, like... They know it already. Yeah, so they, but bear in mind, we've never to this day paid a guest to be on FG. Mm -hmm. We've never... Um, well, that's the only thing you no, can I, do. Yeah, we don't I, do. I, I just expect a guest who's been asked on a podcast would almost come with the intention that they're almost just going to be interviewed. Some, I, I, maybe somewhat. there's a briefing I could give at the beginning. But just do the, almost like, yeah, just just relax. The intention is that they would know the vibe. Yeah, okay, fine. But I guess Fifty Grand is a little bit Yeah. I think you could brief them. Yeah. Are you going to give them food while they're in during the podcast, did you say? You said eating. No, I'm just trying to explain the vibe, I guess, but yeah, no. That's uh, a nice coffee. thought, though. Yeah, but yeah. But it, well, some... Okay, well, we, uh, I'm just saying, we're talk, saying everything now. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, an extra episode of podcast every month on Patreon. Patreon sure. And that's where Cairo is going to come in. Okay. Uh, sorry, Kaya is going to come in. Yeah. And we're going to do like the eating thing. How? So there's going to be, okay, you, I didn't know that. So you're going to have. So not the, an episode. On the, not an on episode the Patreon the one, there'll be, there'll be food. Correct. Each time. Yeah. How come? Okay, so I'll explain. So. Um, Every, what we're going to do is every episode, sorry, there's going to be, the, our goal, the intention right now, and it could change because we're still scan, planning sure. through, the intention right now is we're going to have four episodes of podcast every month. Wow. So, no, no, that's normal. Sorry, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You wowed at the wrong no, bit. I think there is a wild bit two, coming I think up. We're doing two a week because of the Patreon plus the normal one. Exactly. Sorry. So, so on the public platform, there's going to be one episode right, a week. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And on Patreon, there's also going to be one episode wow, a week now. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Now there's, so also, there's also... Eight all together. Eight podcasts. Wow. Yes. Woo. Oh, careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Four episodes on public, four episodes on Patreon every single month. That's a lot of work. Yes. But Kaya, may Allah bless him, he's going to help me with Patreon stuff a lot. And the idea of Patreon, because it's going to be hard to get guests every two guests a week. Stuff like that. The idea of Patreon is us and uh, having a munch. But the point is, is that in Dubai, you have ac the, the food you have access to is amazing. You've got s access to so much yeah, food yeah. and it's all halal. So there's two elements here. There's the fact that there's eccentric food. So there's stuff like, like alien burger, which is like a big, like it's like a, it's like a bright red burger and stuff like that. And then there's, and like um, sushi art, which is like sushi, but in like a really, artistic way and then there's also stuff like just halal stuff that we have here that's not halal so Wagamama is but halal McDonald's but halal so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, and we know that the majority of our audience is in the UK so we're going to capitalise on that and actually like experience food while having a natter cool but every week is different food and but we could do that for 10 years and never repeat a type of food you know yeah that? yeah it's true so yeah and that will create a very relaxed environment as well it will create a relaxed environment yeah. and that's the, this vibe is what I want for Patreon and so yeah so what's nice about that as well is that off air we can figure out like how how often how many episodes you can do in a month and because for then obviously one two three or four we'll have those episodes will be obviously you and i as well which would be cool will i ever get to be on the patreon episode or will i always be the main one well 
you could of course be on a Patreon, but how it would be a bit weird. No, no, it's not exclusive. But we would have to eat, or we'd have to eat uh, virtually. Yeah, we could order yeah. you some food here, and the haram version. Yeah, so you'd have to have veg options. Yeah, like we could order. Uh, Wagman was for you here, yeah. but you have to eat fish and veg. Yeah, that's fine. And then Wagman was fast for me there, and I can eat. Yeah. Or, you, or we can just fly me out there and I can just join you. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We could do uh, that. Last time. When do you think that you uh, you come to Dubai? If well, we can if we can fly you in, yeah. how, like, uh, what's good to say? Okay, sick. Let's do one very soon. Go and get settled. And then let's then and get And make to the Dubai. intention that Papa's going to come out and do a... Do an episode. And now, will Papa be up for uh, uh, interview episodes as well, or mainly our episodes? What do you mean? Like, with 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 a random person, uh, person to interview. Uh, but as in from the UK or from over no, there? No, 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 from, uh, from when, we, when you're over there. Yeah, as in yeah, when you're over there. Yeah, anything, bro, yeah, of course, man. I don't yeah. need to, it doesn't need to just be me. We've had some great times when we've had we've yeah. had guests. We've but had when some, you're here, when you're here, I think it's best it's just you, you and me. And I, yeah. yeah, because it would make no sense for me to be on it the other confusing. Yeah, it, yeah. It'd be really confusing. I'll just be the annoying person, like. <laughs> <there>. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, look, fly me out, and uh, we'll sort it out. Sick. You know how I roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First class. No, I never. Oh, okay. That's a waste of money, in my opinion. Business have, class, please. Have you done? <laughs> <laughs> First class on Emirates is amazing. I've seen videos. I've seen I videos. Done it, yeah. They have a new premium economy though, which is mm. like is is very nice. We'll have to see see what the old <laughs> builder <laughs> yeah. budget saying. Yeah, see how big of a guest we can get in Dubai. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, if it, for it. Uh, yeah, I need to line up some guests in Dubai. Yeah, you should. I have lined Start up one. Now. Okay, I've lined great. up one guest. Great, great, great. Great. Yeah, I need to re line up some more guests. It will happen naturally when you're there. He's a, we've got, he's a, there's this creator in Dubai called Issa, he's a really cool guy. So we got him, oh, inshallah, I met him when I was out there, yeah. I'm I met some nice people out there, man, we got had some cool conversations and stuff. The more we're out there, the more people you're gonna meet and it's all gonna just naturally, organically grow, isn't it? You'll, yeah. You'll grow a, a network of people and before you know it, you'll be popping. Inshallah, man. I, 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 you know what, I want fresh ground, I feel like fresh ground is, sh- oh, this sounds arrogant, but I feel like we have, I've dropped the ball with fresh ground, did. A you what? Ball. And I do think that we have the, uh, I, I have, okay, I'm going to say, I have a goal for us to hit 1 million subscribers. That's a good goal. <laughs> You've said it now. That's a lot, that's a lot of, a lot of, how many have we got now? 69,000. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. 100%. Yeah. You've got to set, set your goals high. But, but, but okay, if, I, if my goal is hitting a million subscribers, mm. I have to make a big change. True. And is there a bigger change than packing up your entire family moving to Dubai? No. That's a very big change. It's like the land of opportunity right now as well, though. Yes, well, I actually said that if you remember, I said land of opportunity. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, we almost. I feel like it's a shame that it's the studio you won't be able to see all the the the, the, the sunlight and, and Dubai. Yeah. As my thoughts are, it'd be almost nice. It'd be lovely to see that you're in Dubai. Yeah. No, I don't know why I said it like that. It's funny. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's annoying. Uh, um, yeah, like you almost. It'd be nice to like. It's hard to like. It's hard to use sign the lighting. Yeah, we, yeah. we messed up actually when we were in. Uh, we we shot that episode once on the sofa. Do you remember yeah, the lighting? It was really bad. It was yeah. Really awful. Yeah. But my point is just to, for people to really see that you're in Dubai. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just a little me thinking out loud. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a bad idea. No joking. Yeah, well, moving, uh, moving the cameras was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, so talking, the, and talking about Dubai, we weren't you like we you you weren't going to talk about Dubai in this episode. It would have been a really like would have been a nice episode. Yeah, we weren't like, going to talk like, about this. Dubai, has yeah. been uh, epic, I believe. There's yeah. been some great conversation. Yeah, and I, I'm glad that I convinced you to actually tell the people that we you know you're moving to Dubai. Yeah, and you wanted to wait till you were there and go hi, I'm in Dubai. Yeah, I wanted to do that. I'm so glad that would have been like I would have had to hold held a lot back. Yeah, you I'm would've... glad we had this conversation. I'm glad we transferred. Um, uh, uh, by the way, operations are still good one from uh, UK. I should say that. So uh, Kareem is obviously working from UK. The game, which obviously you can see behind the camera, is still going to be um, shipped from the UK. Is that about a million units there? <laughs> no. So we ordered um, that. There is probably about four, three or four thousand. Really? Games, yeah. Three thousand, maybe. Really? All those boxes. Yeah. How many is in per box? Fifty. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because you got to bear in mind yeah, that those boxes, the, the packaging. there's boxes underneath those boxes and behind those boxes. So just the boxes that you see, yeah. in, there's, there's like another layer behind. Okay, that's a lot. I thought there'd be there's lots. But then the game, I suppose, has got the little packaging around it. Yeah, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, there's about 3,000 there. Yeah, cool. It's a lot, I suppose. So they're going to be obviously carrying on being shipped from here, mm-hmm. from the UK. Do you um, still promote it as much? 
Do I still? Yeah. Do we still? You know what, bro? Um, not as often. We don't, but not. But, but that's bad because we should be. I was thinking this the other day. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's a great product. It's an amazing product. Yeah, we're we're actually. Um, I remember the hype around it when it first yeah. came out, and a lot of people. It still sells daily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying you should promote it more, man. We should. So. We're actually doing a um, freshly grounded stall on the 27th of Ramadan in XL Arena. I'm going. I'm going with the boys from Men's Pie. I've been meaning to ask you off air if you can pat me up a little bit. Or just meet me there. I didn't know you were going. We're going. Bro, you, you have to be at the Fresh Grounded Store. I'm going, bro. You come to the Fresh Grounded I'm going. Next week, isn't it? 27th. Bro, yes, bro. Fish. Bro, I, I'm going to make an Instagram video after this. I don't care. Really? And I'm going to say, me and we're going to be there. Even if you just pop in for a second, bro. Yeah, I'll pop in for a second or two. I've got, yeah. I've got, I've got well, yeah, we're taking yeah, you've got the, worship to do. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of worship. Uh, but no, I'll I'll you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and introduce you to Mufti. Yeah, bring me in. I'm taking loads of reverts. Is it? A gang of us, yeah. Inshallah. I'm going to message him. I was actually going to, I've been keeping me and say, I didn't, I didn't think you were there. Obviously, I probably were going to be there, but whether you were going to do whatever you usually do. But I was saying we're coming. So if you can, I don't know, just let me come backstage or let me do something. So I'm not, allowed, I'm not actually back. This, I'm Fine. not, I've, I'm a paid stall holder at this event. You're a paid stall Yeah, I'm not. Your friends like, with Chowdhury, I'm sure you'll be mingling. Well, you don't <laughs> say like that, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, I'm going to try and introduce him to He's a busy man. Yeah, sure. Uh, but uh, I've always wanted to introduce him. You'll love him. Fine. And he'll love you. Yeah. Um, and inshallah, we'll make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, and well, uh, but I'm gonna be very protective of you, man. In, in there, you know that. I'll be all right. No, because um, I'm very protective of you, man. Because I, uh, uh, oh man, because I, you know, uh, whatever. Protective. I, I say, yeah, I am protective of you, bro. Yeah, but what? Someone's. What do you mean? Why no, do not physically, because I can't do anything. Yeah. It, physically, I can't even. I what? can't even. Do I need protect? Do you think I'll need protection? No, then? I think that you're a very special individual, and um, I don't want. Uh, I, I, and you're not often in these environments. Mm. You're not. No. And you're also big man Sam. And yeah. um, sometimes uh, people might see. So I've been in a lot of these events, and sometimes people might try and capitalize off Sam for Fresh Ground is here and pull you here, there, and everywhere. And um, by the way, not I'm not talking about the organizers of the event. By the of way, of course, I'm not talking about the, uh, the organizers of the event. I love them, and, yeah. and but I'm talking about. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people, bro. Cool. And I, I and I, and because I've experienced that, and I know how to manage those situations, perhaps um, I never want to be in a situation where I feel like you're being taken for granted. That's what I mean, protective. Anger. My intention is I'm just gonna pass through and enjoy the night for what it is. And yeah, it's twenty seven nights with Tarawi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just gonna just yeah, so give some salams if anyone knows me, and that's about it. So, um, so we're selling the game on okay. the twenty seventh night, yep. and uh, that's potentially going to be the last ever time we're physically selling the game in person. Okay. okay. And so, if anybody is coming to the twenty seventh night, grab as many games as you possibly can, okay. because uh, Papa's got to get some flights. So I'm not joking. That's not sure. I've already booked the flights. I uh, know <laughs> uh, because we're yeah. gonna that way we might not ever uh, be yeah. selling the game in person cool. ever again. So everyone come and buy the game. Yeah, and also it sounds to me that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, anyway, I, I forgot to tell you this. I mean, yeah. People are thinking, like, I'm sure you're going. I but, uh, yeah, it, it'd be nice if you did tell me because I thought I was important to you. But it's fine. You're taking Josh booked the your ticket, revert, friends. Josh, no, no, just like the couple of reverts and that. So it's going to be a good little group. But so if you want to see some, bro, do you know how nice it was walking in Men's Buy, by the way, and everybody giving me salams, and. And like, yeah. it's been like that from day one. Of course. No, but like, you say, of course, bro. Not everyone in there is Muslim, I have to I, add. But yeah, I understand. Did everyone give you salam as in the non Muslims gave you salam? Uh, no, one, the, the one, I think there was only one non Muslim at the time in the store. Fine. And he said hi to me, very accommodating and warm. Yeah. Of uh, course. But it was, it, but you know what's always course, really nice and refreshing? Of, yeah, there was loads of salams, of course. Yeah. We had, yeah of what's course. really refreshing is that you're going to Men's Buy, and because and, uh, I hadn't been to St. Albans in a few years, yeah. uh, the, all of the faces Thanks were new. Yeah. <laughs> but I have been going to Men's Buy, but just the Watford one. Okay, yeah. I should clarify. The. The the like so I went walked in like yeah white guys again like tattoos, tattoos giving salams giving salams yeah man. Muslims and like yeah. it's amazing but you're still there strong doing your dawah and the uh, alhamdulillah that's all from Allah the guy next to you remember the guy next Ahmed How'd came you? over and said uh, uh, Lebanese Lebanese um, Lebanese lives in Grand Canaria um, but he said do you want to give any more information about him maybe his postcode. Uh, Morgan, he lives in Nimorgan okay, in Gran Canaria. fine and uh, sorry anyway back to the story but he came over if you remember what he said he, the first time he'd seen myself and Josh really talk was on a Freshly Grounded and he's a massive like, say fan he's a massive fan he's now about to hopefully inshallah go back and open a men's bar in Gran Canaria which is exciting Inshallah. but he uh, Freshly Grounded was the, the platform that he witnessed us talking understanding that w w who, we, who we really were not just wow. in the hair industry it's a, it's an important platform yeah, um, it'd be nice to have Josh back on 
He would be nice. Bro, that's, he's there if you... I believe he's there. He's extremely busy, but we can definitely organise that. Maybe we can look at the old budget in Dubai. Budget, Because <laughs> right. he would like that. And then we yeah, can, fine. Anyone else want to move along? No, Josh is good. Josh is important. Maybe Chuck Owen in. Yeah. How's uh, Owen doing in terms of... Owen's a great guy. Right? Owen's fantastic. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say this. I'm going to say... He's leaving me. Okay. To move to another men's buyer. Yes. His own men's buyer? Not yet. Okay. So he's actually, I basically foolishly took him out to Amsterdam to do some development foolish work. Man. And foolish he, man. He, he foolishly, he fell in love with it and uh, he's moving there. You foolish person. I say foolish because he's my strongest, oh, okay. strongest man. And yeah. uh, I, I showed him the bright lights and uh, he got, when I say bright lights, I'm talking about Amsterdam was just a, an amazing place. Which bright lights in Amsterdam? Did you show him, Sam? Wrong, wrong wording for okay, him. Fine, the bright lights of our shops, beautiful. Right. Um, okay. No, when I say that, obviously it's an incredible place and he's, uh, he made the decision actually, he's, you know, he's been with us for four years. Yep. He's going to go and serve some time out there. Alhamdulillah, we were able to charge a little bit more. It's a very good opportunity for him to go and save some money, also live in, a, in an incredible place. So he's leaving my side, but he's very much staying with me and um, he's going to be with Men's Bar forever. But yeah, he's an incredible man. Very credible. So he's moving to Amsterdam to head up one of the new shops to be yeah. a, a big key figure over there. So I'm very happy for him, but also very sad. How's he... Uh, have you talked to him about Islam before? Uh, bits and pieces, bro. Yeah. He, yeah, bits and pieces. Yeah. He's a lovely guy. He's an amazing guy. You're a great character. Yeah. He's a fantastic guy. He's a... Uh, He's had a huge impact, actually, on uh, on Men's Buyer, myself. He, he came at a, a, a time, not when we were vulnerable at all, but he came at a time when there was lots of changes and he's just, his hard work and and, yeah. and himself, he's just been a, he's a, a huge asset. Um, and uh, yeah, who knows what the future brings for him. Who knows what the future brings for him, may Allah guide us all. I mean. And uh, Sam, I actually remember, you You talk about that time in, Fresh, in, in Men's Buyer, and I actually remember one of the times, and you don't know this, <clears throat> one of the things I think that made me feel really grateful for, no, made me feel really special actually in our friendship was uh, when you were going through that really rough time in Men's Buyer and you called me. I called you. I remember that phone call and I actually I actually quote I quote that to people all the time Do you? from from your mouth because obviously you had the experience. I don't know if you remember what you said. No, I don't remember what I said. You must remember what you said. In, in our phone in call? I remember what I said in our yeah, phone call. And I take that and uh, it gave me, uh, and I, st I stand by that. Really? Really stand by what it. What specifically? So, in a nutshell, for people who don't know, can I tell you what I was going to say? Please, because sorry, in, uh, to give yeah. context, and then you come back to you. Yeah. Fine. So what I was going to say is that the reason that's so special for me is because I respect you a lot, especially in business, bro. Mm -hmm. With the, all you do in business, Allah is incredible. And then when you called me, I answered, and then you just like completely um, let it all out, and you were talking about the stress that you're going through, and as sad, obviously, I felt for you. Not sad because you wasn't depressed, but you obviously venting mm. and the reason made me feel so special because I was like wow like this is like what's been a new level of our friendship like he's confiding in me he trusts me he trusts me for both advice but also that I'm a safe space to vent to and that felt really special and I thought I don't ever want to break this trust and we spoke for a long a decent time I was here in the office I and, um, as well. and uh, it was really nice man I thought wow like that's special man that he would feel uh, that 100%. I could give him value and I'd stand by that if like you, bro you give amazing advice to be fair always do that. um but yeah, I think I really, I was venting, wasn't I? It was, it was a stressful time. I think it was just it was after lockdown, time. if just you remember. Lockdown. Just after lockdown, three or four people decided to leave at the same time. Um, no comment. But it was stressful to deal with. Um, just kind of, lockdown was stressful enough. But coming back to like finding the shop opening and then people leaving and like, but not, they could have left obviously during the lockdown, but they decided to come back for a week and then all left. So it really left me in the lurch. And it vexed me. Um, and uh, I remember confiding in you and, and, and really letting out. And um, what I took from it, bro, was this, and I talk about this all the time, and I stand by this. I really, really stand by it. You're basically talking about Apple as a company and, and working in an Apple store and how they generally don't have their people on the floor working um, for years and years and years. Generally, they don't fire people, but kind of people that kind of edge people out when they lose that kind of that drive, that, uh, that, that passion, that energy that they start with. They kind of like edge them out so they can bring new people in to bring that more, that passion, that, that energy. energy. And brother, I stand by that. And I've always kind of done it. But after hearing that from how App Apple operate and believing it more so, I stand by it. So yeah. to be honest, when I see someone who, alhamdulillah, no one now got an incredible team throughout. But when there are people, the stale people, when you you start noticing like, you know, the people who kind of losing the passion for the brand or their job or whatever, I, of I often think like, I, I'm generally I don't fire people, but... 
edge you out because I've got so many more people who can take your spot and give so much more energy, passion, dedication to it. So I very much embrace it. So it's, I don't really want loads of staff turnover, but naturally people come and go. Um, and hearing that, bro, was just like, it was amazing, man. And I really, really like, it made a big impact on me. And I literally quote it all the time. And I really, and it, like, it's the, it's the, just the truest word spoken. Like you want, uh, you want amazing people with good energy around you. Sometimes that fades out with people. That's cool if it does. It's cool. Take yeah. It, take, take it a- elsewhere. That's, That's what it was meant to be. Want, yeah. There's so many, I look at it as there's, I'm giving someone a job. There's a chair. They can have the chair. If that person can't perform in the chair, like to, to my expectations and my standards, I'd rather them not be there and replace them with someone who who would, because there's so many people that you know, want that opportunity. So it very much just made me very confident in the fact that people are always going to come and go. And ultimately, if they're not giving me what I want, i.e. the right type of energy, first and foremost, I'd rather them they continue their journey elsewhere and I'll, I'll, and I'll replace them with someone who wants it. Yeah, so I remember saying to you impact. that, I remember saying to you that um, the, <coughs> now that you mentioned it, that we uh, that you have to expect it and not see pe- not see people uh, bigger than they are. Like not ha- have so much weight on them. Like, like you get so let down because yeah. they, for example, didn't open their own store. Yeah. So there's people who are going to come and they're going to be so good, like Owen, mm-hmm. who it's inevitable he's going to open his own mm-hmm. store. Probably going to have his own chain. Yeah. Because he's that like you see it. 100%. But then other people who. Alhamdulillah, they come in, they serve the purpose and they leave and that's calm, it's yeah, conveyor belt. Of course. And in, like I said, in Apple, why do you think that people are so high energy and happy all the time? Because they're there, they're excited to be there, but they they purposely hire people who want to be actors, want to be photographers, want to be a businessman. Because then when you come in and you go, uh, as a customer, you say, hi, I'm looking for a, a, a laptop that can help me edit my uh, music videos mm-hmm. better, my music better. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm talking about good. a concept here, but okay. it's a method good example. example. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I want to edit my music better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go, oh, I am a lead singer in a band. Like, oh, we do this all the time. Let me help you. This is what I use for it's my band. that happened when you were Apple? Yeah, that did happen. Yeah, yeah but for me, yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, that's, so yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. the person. So imagine someone comes to Menspire, they get in a trim. Mm. And they, yeah, I'm getting a trim for... Um, anything bro like my, my football match mm. and your guy's like yeah bro I play semi football yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like the conversation could be better yeah. because you're hiring people who are yeah. so different yeah yeah um, but then the the, the, the the thing of that is that it's fine to have them on a conveyor belt because there's mm-hmm. two different types of employees and yes. employees that come to the conveyor belt yeah. and employees that oh my man wants to be with us yeah. and if they want to be there they'll be there yeah 100% yeah. so it was a good, good phone call and again it made impact so thanks for that no I appreciate that man you've given me a lot of good advice in the past as well especially about thinking bigger mm. so um Bro, can you believe he's playing next week, Dan Juma, in uh, Villarreal versus Liverpool in a Champions League semi final? Are you going? Uh, oh, so I was. He he asked me to, and I, right. I I'm not because it's 27th night. Mashallah. I'm gonna be at the next Oh, of course, that's the 27th. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. That is that's incredible. probably the biggest match of his career. Yeah. Incredible. And Inshallah, he's going to be in the World Cup as well, man. Inshallah. Made the him, but like, yeah, I mean, big, big stuff, man. Respect. Like, Massive respect. If, he, if they beat Liverpool, which, granted, is a very, very difficult task, mm-hmm. although Champions League anything can happen. Who do you support? I, don't, I just support him. <laughs> Amazing. Just him? Yeah. The team or just him? No, just whoever he is. Rate that. Yeah. I don't um, entirely rate the team necessarily. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I support him, man, yeah. wherever he's at. Yeah. And um, it's funny because I make it so public because... Along better, he's a really good friend, mm. and I always make public. Like, I'm so happy for him. Like, I, like when he scores, it's like I scored. Amazing. And I remember I got a DM recently. Someone was like, <laughs> someone's like, someone DM me saying, saying like, stop taking, stop getting clout of Dan Juma. Really? Like, so anyway, it's, I find this it, comments funny now because right. um, I feel like I'm uh, I'm at age and a place now where I'm comfortable with who I am, where I am, and yeah. if I'm posting something, I'm doing it sincerely and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Inshallah. So yeah, bro, I, I've yeah, started yeah. to realize that there's kids on social media 100%. who want to uh, be kids. But any grown man who's a serious person who's on he's on his stuff, yeah, um, has no time to comment on other people. Of course. Yeah, but have you ever DM someone going, mate, um, like? X Y Z, like it doesn't happen. So then I realised that there's, there's types of people. So and um, yeah, of course. When I do think about those people who probably would say things that they've got time to do, I think about my little cousins who've probably got a lot of time and they've yeah. got a mobile phone in their hands. Yeah. So it's a young man's game. Doing yeah, it is a young man's game. Male guidance, silly. but. Um, but yeah, man, and he's shown so much support to me. So I feel really, really passionate when he scores. I'm like, oh yeah, like yeah, amazing. If it was, if, but even like recently, bro. Yesterday he scored. Uh, two days ago, he scored two goals in his game they played against Valencia, and he uploaded the picture. Mm-hmm. I'll show you now. I don't know if you saw it. And he uploaded the picture of his goal, and if yeah. you look at the tags, he tagged freshly grounded. Is that oh, the only amazing. tag? Yeah. 
Like yeah. he really, he really like supports us, man. See, see who liked it at the top. See those top. Do big Papa Kane. Ah, big Papa Kane liked it. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, he likes Papa Kane. I think he dresses well. It's just similar to you, I think. Yeah, yeah so, I think he dresses better than me, but he, yeah, mashallah, amazing. Appreciate the support. Yeah, man. So. It is nice, but there's been really nice people supporting us, man. Yeah. Like everyone's been so lovely to, to FG. Like even mm-hmm. on that level, like on all levels, bro. Like people, the the community, then like the guests that we have, like, like the local guests. Like I had such big conversations with Sheikh Tim, Sheikh Mohammed, uh, sorry, Sheikh Tim, Sheikh mm-hmm. Yahya, mm-hmm. these people who've like really supported me with Fresh Grounded through the ups and yeah, downs. Yeah, I've had like private consultations with Sheikh Tim. I've sat with him and gone, "This is where I'm getting my anxiety from," and he's talked me through it. And wow. he's gone, "Like you got a good thing going." don't give up on it like xyz this yeah. happens this happens same with Shekhaya. and then the, the community level then there's like the guest level and then even these guys level like Daniel with Sunny Williams stuff like I had amazing conversations with Mufti Mank bro like <coughs> Mufti Mank has had amazing conversations with us like where he's gone like I remember bro the day before I had the, com- the Mufti Mank episode I said to him he rang me I got a random voice note bro on my phone didn't have the number saved nothing and he just goes Mr. Childry, like, let's do this. I was like, raw. I just came out of nowhere, but I recognised the voice, obviously. And then we had a phone call. And on the phone call, I said to him, I said, Mufti, is there anything that you don't want me to talk about? Mm-hmm. And he goes, he goes, I'm speaking to Faisal, aren't I? And that sentence cool. meant so much to me because what he was saying is, I trust you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly that. Because it was a live stream, bro. Whatever I say, yeah, yeah. You're, you're he's never... got two million followers. He's got a lot of people watching him. It could be, do you know what I mean? And he was like, Fair play. bro, he, he, he no, not unscripted. He goes, unscripted yeah, phase yeah. one, right? I was yeah, like, yeah. Fair play. I said, I, I get that. That says a lot. I said, I appreciate that, man. You're never going to put someone in an uncomfortable I position. would never do that because that's not, we're not a gotcha, yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. what's it called? Gotcha journalism. That's yeah. not FG. Yeah, yeah, FG yeah. is just good vibes. Yeah, yeah. And, um, Fair play. So, uh, and then after we done the podcast, I said to him, I said, oh, he goes, how do you think you end? And I said, I said, I didn't love it. Like, as in, I loved the, a bit like having him on as well. I said, I think it could have been better. Like on my end, I feel like I was so tense about, it's a big guest mm. and it was live stream. As I would have probably preferred not to do it live stream in hindsight and made sure I like managed it better. And that's an example Why of- Why did you choose the live stream? Because <coughs> I was like, oh, it's big episode, live stream, Mufti Meg, like we okay. like, okay. good okay. for the algorithm and stuff like that. Uh, but in hindsight, I would have done it um, different mm-hmm. and had relaxing time with him in the studio and stuff like that. So um, what happened is, um, but, but but even that episode, so then anyway, I said that to him and he said, well, he goes, I'm coming back in a few months. He goes, let's do it in person. Like, how nice is that? And anyway, but imagine that episode, but like Mufti sitting there and us being here and still being like, like imagine the conversation be like, Mufti, you're always in London. What's your favourite London takeaway? And he's like, bro, I don't even like it. And we're just riffing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, because bro, everyone, you want to get motivation from different well, you can get it everywhere. Yeah, of course, course. FG, yeah, course, let's course. make it a place where you listen and you're having a laugh yeah. and it's just hella laugh. Why not, bro? Yeah. So that's what I feel like is missing out on. Yeah. And um, so uh, he, um, yeah, so he, like even even people like him, Sunny Bill, and all, they always show support. Like Sunny Bill was in the UK recently, and I dropped him a message, and he said, "Oh man, I'm having to fly out, but like definitely we'll do something soon." So, so everyone's always got love and stuff, which is nice. And that's what I like, He's man. man I, I think the most important thing about Fresh Uganda is our relationships. Yeah, but more than anything. Yeah, people were supposed to say it's like when when you say when you when people first found out that when they said that McDonald's is not a fast food chain, it's a real estate business, mm. and everyone's like, "Raw, that makes so much sense." Mm-hmm. I feel like with FG, FG is not a podcast. It's just like relationship building. And everyone we have on podcast, hopefully you have a great relationship with. We could drop a message on WhatsApp and we have a nice laugh. Yeah. I think that's that can then be resonated. Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. that? 100%. Yeah, man. This must be one of the longest episodes we've ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How long we is it? Call it? It's been about, no, it's, just not, it's under two hours still. Under two hours? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, still yeah. quite a long time. But we'll call it a day. But Bill, listen, this is it. I'm listening. I know. Yeah. That's why I'm here. How do we end it? Um, with a handshake, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the end of it's not the end of anything, really. It's just the end of this little era of fresh grounded London. What's the time? Because I'm I'm gonna yeah, th- I'm packing the studio up today. Oh, you? Yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna go home. Didn't realize the time. Yeah, I'm gonna go and get my suitcase and stuff, and then come, come back. back. Why didn't you bring the suitcase with you? I thought about that, but I didn't. Would have been saved you a big trip. Yeah, with ten minutes, twenty minutes back and forth. So, bro, it's been a pleasure, my brother. It's been an honor. Thank you. I'm grateful for everything that you've given me. Likewise. And I'm looking forward to the future of FG. Inshallah. 
Take care of yourself. And you. I'll see you for my haircut, inshallah. Till then. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.